a very interesting live stream today. We're going to be checking out the Chris Chan documentary. <laughs> Can't believe I'm doing this, but Chris Chan's out of jail. We're going to check this documentary out and we're just going to kind of hang out and kick it and uh, have some fun, hopefully. Um, Chris Chan is one of those guys that is, um, I guess, very, mm, how would you say, uh, topical <laughs> on the internet. An individual that is um, very trending at times when they... When they um, cause some news. So we, we're going to check this out. <laughs> so bear with me. And uh, we're going to have some fun. Okay, so... We should, should be started. Oh, of course, the stream was private. I don't know why he does that. All right, so here we are. Make sure that we're sounding nice and good. I am going to be starting up. Chris Chan in the house, and the house is in Chris Chan, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, we're live. We sound good. All right, let's get you guys filing in here. We are going to watch this Chris Chan documentary. I'm going to be playing video games off screen. Couldn't figure out how to have my sound for my capture card uh, not on. <laughs> well, while I listen so that you guys wouldn't be hearing my Call of Duty shit. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started. You guys should be getting the alerts, hopefully. Chris Chan's one of those characters, man, that is just like... It's a train wreck. <laughs> it really is. You can't you can't stop looking or watching uh, the train wreck when it happens. So we are definitely going to uh, let me pull my window over here. We're gonna have the documentary over there, and we should be all squared. Yep, we are good. Hopefully you guys should start filing. What's up, VJC? How's everybody doing today? The stream sound okay? We should be we should be loud and clear. I'm gonna let you guys file in. We're going to do a little bit of a watchy today. We're going to watch this Chris Chan doc documentary. Um, he got out of or she he she whatever you want to call him got out of jail. Uh, after they uh, had the very controversial uh, arrest where they did incest with their 79-year-old mother, who's now, I believe, 81. Their mother would be 81 right now, I believe, or at least about to be 81. Um, mm, you know, very interesting individual is Christine Chan. <laughs> very interesting. Make sure you guys smash that like. While we get ready for here, I'm going to wait for some of you guys to start filing in. What's up, Apollo? You can't wait for some 4chan memes? Uh, this is more Chan, Chris Chan. Not so much 4chan, but Chris Chan. So, yeah, we're going to get started here uh, in just a teensy weeny tad bit. Let me make sure we uh, have... I can pull... All right, there we go. Yeah, we got it ready. We got it ready. How's everybody's night going, by the way? We had a we're having a good Wednesday. It's hump day. It is hump day. Have you guys got a 
notification sent out. Let me know in the chat. Notifications have been kind of weird as of late. YouTube does them sometimes. YouTube does them sometimes. YouTube does them sometimes not. I'm going to set out a thing. Come hang out and let's watch the Chris Chan documentary. Lean into the Chan, they say. Lean into the Chan. You know, I've been looking up Chris Chan on um, on YouTube and, and Google and stuff. And every time I search uh, Chris Chan, now it's pulling up Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan stuff because of the... Uh, I guess the rush hour four um, news that's been coming coming on. Uh, I guess they just recently started announcing that they're going to be doing a rush hour four. So now I'm getting a whole bunch of like when I type in Chris Chan, it's Chris Chris Tucker and Jackie Chan. So I bet you Chris Chan's actually kind of happy that that's uh, that's that's going on with them. It gets a little bit of the uh, algorithm and the SEO away from uh, from their stuff. What's up, VJC? You love the Rush Hour movies, yeah? They're they're great, actually. They're uh, very action packed. They're a lot of fun. I like them. What's up, Jefferson? What's up, Rich? What's up, everybody? Now everybody seems like they're filing in. Glad to see you guys here. Let's get you guys. Get you guys in here. Smash that like, guys. Smash that like. We're going to get started here in a minute. I'm sharing out the stream. I'm glad to see you guys here. So yeah, this documentary's been out for a few years and there's like over like 70 parts on it. It's the Con comprehensive history of Chris Chan and there's like several parts to it. Um funny enough, they thought the comprehensive history was done because Chris Chan went to uh to jail. Uh but no, <laughs> for the benefit of everybody, Chris Chan um got released what's up stefano be afraid everyone we should be afraid so we're going to start here very shortly i'm uh i'm posting this out I appreciate you guys here. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. You never heard of this guy? Oh, man. You're about to go down the rabbit hole here. <laughs> You're about to go down the rabbit hole big time, Rich. Um, I just found out about Chris Chan a few years back, like 2018. Um, unfortunately, I was not at the too many games that Chris Chan had a, uh, a meltdown at. They had a they had a meltdown at too many games like twenty eighteen or something where they were just like panicking on the floor and just kind of like in a fetal position. I was not there that year. All right, so are we ready, guys? Are we ready? Let me see some ones in the chat if you guys are ready. I have some water, so I'm good to go. What's up, Michael McNally? We're gonna just kind of watch and kind of hang out and watch. Uh, All right, let's go. We're going to push play. <laughs> Chris Chan. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, and dudes of all teenagers, as well as the uh, gals. My name is Christian Chandler. I am here, and y'all are there.
crazy. Part one. All right, guys. Here we go. Smash that like. Christopher Weston Chandler was born on February 24th. Aw, cute baby. In Charlottesville, Virginia, to parents Bob, aged 54, and Barbara, 40. Bob had worked in the engineering field for Western Electric and later General Electric. The family held Bob's life accomplishments very proudly, as he had at least seven patents to his name. Look, they know everything about his parents. That's crazy. The production of Kleenex and molding of plastic water containers. Bob was very world conscious and was an avid collector of stamps since a very young age. Later in life, he developed a love for music, especially foreign music. He eventually amassed a collection of over 10,000 vinyl records. Turn off the subtitles. He had a son and daughter from a previous marriage. The relationships with whom were strained, to say the least. Barbara was a secretary with Virginia Power. She had a habit of hoarding her belongings and was an emotionally abusive person, which convinced her then 17-year-old son, Cole Smithy, to seek independence and live life on his own. So when Chris came along, Bob and Barb got a chance to start anew. The new family started their new life in their humble Ruckersville home. Chris later claimed that at around two months of age, he uttered his first word. Cute looking kid. It didn't take long for the parents to see that Chris wasn't quite like most other babies. The first signs of his autism could be witnessed in 1983. Despite his condition being congenital, he had stated that his autism was brought about by one particularly traumatic event when he was 18 months old. A babysitter named Roach, or Roach, would look after baby Christopher whenever his parents would go out in the evenings. One of these nights, Chris inadvertently infuriated her, and she locked him in a room filled with toys. In it's the always dark, the babysitter. Alone. This would prove so traumatic that he refused to speak for the next six years. Even though he sees this event as the source of all his troubles, he does not blame his parents for keeping Roach as his babysitter. So they she's the one that nobody. costed it all. She trapped Despite him in a living out his fucking closet. Adult, Chris was anything but quiet. He confessed later on in life that he screeched often and was very troublesome to his parents. Who isn't troublesome? In 1985, the Hammer household moved into the neighborhood. The Hammers and the Chandlers struck up a cordial relationship, which led to Chris forming a bond with the Hammer's daughter. What kind of sick Sarah. person does that to a young child? I mean, it was a babysitter, right? His childhood friend, <laughs> and that she greatly helped him with his autism. However, from what is known of their relationship, it is also likely that she took advantage of Chris's innocence and trust, and may be seen more as a bully than a friend. For example, she once told him that Casper the Friendly Ghost was hiding under her house. Naturally, Chris crawled into the Hammer's crawl space to find him, only to find spiderwebs, bugs, and dirt instead. Sarah locked him in. After about half an hour... So look, he would make comic books later based on events in his life. So here's Casper. Here's... Uh, you know what I mean? Chris, James, everything, Sarah. He makes different comics about parts of his life. Her dad came to his rescue. On another occasion... She told Chris that if he were to eat the upper thing of a honeysuckle, it would taste like honey. This is a reference to the berries of a honeysuckle, which can be slightly harmful if in large doses. Fortunately, their parents told them of the dangers of doing so before Christopher could fulfill Sarah's wish. Wait, so she wanted him to like five. Chris began studying at Green get sick from eating honey circle honey circle? It is not known how he was treated here or how he got along with the other kids. In addition to taking regular classes at the primary school, he received language training at James Madison University. In 1987, in a lengthy letter addressed to Chris dated December 26th, Bob offered his outlook on life and presented some life advice for his son. There are many sides to a mountain and many ways to climb it. If you get stopped, back off, regroup, and try another way. If you are still not successful, maybe it is not meant to be. If it is meant to be, having it on the back burner simmering for a while is not bad. It will pop up again, and the way to attain it will be there. Everything in its time. Your mother and I have done our best for you, and in return, we expect at least that from you, for yourself and your children. He also expressed wishes for his son to inherit and hold dearly his vast collection of music, movies, stamps, 
and art prints. He reminisced about the straight razor which he inherited from his grandfather, which he carelessly broke while using it as a screwdriver. Bob still held on to that broken razor What's up, his Gavin? entire life because his grandfather wanted him to have it. Bob hoped that Chris would share his father's sentiment. I hope that you will not carelessly misuse, waste, or destroy the value of the many things. His dad seems like he was a good you. person. First, learn all about them, how to use them and enjoy them, their value, and how you can thoughtlessly waste their value. Then enjoy them as I have. For example, my very good stamp collection, or all the recorded popular music on cassette tape. Poor Bob, tape, you're right, Mike. Records, my books on popular music, movies, entertainers, musical theater. Ship models, my daylilies, gazebo, and dreams. He sure as hell listed a whole bunch of things, though. ...an insight into Bob's character, as he feared that all he had accomplished over the course of his life may be lost. In 1989, during a weekly trip to the toy store with his mother, Chris picked up a GoBot... GoBots! ...and slowly started to read out the text on the package, ending his six years of silence. So he was mute for six years, year, Jesus. Bob and Chris converted the shed in their backyard into a workshop, christening it the Dreaming Studio. Bob had hoped that he and his son would build things together there. He even commemorated the space with a plaque. Dreaming Studio of Mr. C and Little C, where dreams do come true. However, Dreaming Studio. When asked about it, Chris could not recall what, if anything, had been built there. It was instead What's up, NES Wizard? Barbara for storage. For Christmas of that year... Game Boy! Game Boy. This was also the year that the family got Patty Chandler, a Beagle Spitz mix, which they picked up as a pup from their Aunt Karina. Cute dog! Chris grew very attached to the dog, displaying a fondness and arguably a love rarely shown for anything or anyone else in his life. The Dream Studios, the... <laughs> Bob co-hosted you think I have a new on WT You think I have a new name for my room the Dream Studio? I don't know about that. I like to call it the Command Center. <laughs> I like to call it the ABE Nation HQ. I don't know about Dream Studio, but that was sweet though. That was with his dad, you know. Me and my dad don't have a Dream Studio. Maybe we should build one. TJU Radio during the program he displayed his keen knowledge on 20s and 30s jazz music. I love jazz okay, music. Now we go on to performance number two, which is tight like that. This is November the 9th, 19... Real quick, on the reel, his dad, Bob, sounds just like... Like, 4chan... I mean, not 4chan. Chris Chan sounds like, like fucking splitting image of his dad, by the way. Like, it's fucking awesome. Like, in, a, in an interesting way. Twenty-eight with Chicago personnel. Like look at that, he sounds. Chris, Chris Chan just sounds just like his dad. With Chicago musicians featuring kazoo, guitar, and jug by Hudson Whitaker. Tampa Reds guitar. Thomas A. Dorsey is on the piano and the washboard. Frankie Halfpipe Jackson. Vocals interact to make this a great session. Listen for some very good kazoo and jugs, and notice how Halfpipe Jackson laughs like scat singing. Very unusual. Isn't that crazy, though? How, like, how were they able to find, like, footage or audio footage of his dad talking? Like, the internet's a crazy fucking place. Like, they literally got childhood photos of him. <laughs> they, they got old clips. They literally have, like, a documentary of his whole entire family. Like, like how did they get audio of his dad? Like, that's what I want to know. Ridge Eagle says Chris Chan attacked a GameStop employee over Sonic Boom. Let him out freeze back. To Why the hell would you attack somebody over Sonic Boom? That game sucked. I remember there was a lot of hype behind it, though. I got Sonic Boom on the Wii U. Uh, I got Sonic Boom on the Wii U. Um, that game had a lot of hype behind it, strange enough, because there was a cartoon series behind it. And uh, I think... Uh, they tried. Now, this guy was in jail, Rich. He was arrested for, allegedly, I guess he admitted to it, having incest with his mom who had dementia. That's kind of uh, the spoiler of this whole end of this series. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, let's continue on. Nineteen ninety also marked the last year of Chris's tenure at Green County Primary School. 
For his is that his teacher? Damn, man. Is that his teacher or who is that? For the 90s, that was a fucking 10 right there. He transferred to Nathaniel Green Elementary School. It was here where he allegedly had very distressing experiences. He asserts that the staff at the school didn't know how to handle autistic children and treated him cruelly. What's up, Da Hobbs? Chris contends that five members of staff abused him by pinning him down to the ground, holding his wrists and ankles, and audio taping his cries. Furthermore, he claimed that the principal forced him to sit on his lap and said offensive things to him. But little Christopher resisted, and the advances never went further than that. What the fuck? Did they just say he had the principal used to make while well, he claims his principal at Nathaniel Green Elementary School used to make him sit in his lap and say offensive things. No wonder this dude's fucked up. <laughs> no wonder he's like, I'm not trying to laugh. I'm laughing out of awkwardness. Like, no wonder he's so fucked up in the head. Like, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Cheese and rice, right? I don't think, uh, I don't think I've ever had a principal make me sit in their lap. <laughs> Poor, you know, you got to kind of feel like, like it's a train wreck, a train wreck. Like you got to, it's such a weird phenomenon of a character. Like, like, like how the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like so crazy that it's hard to believe that this is an actual person, right? <laughs> Honestly. You can't wait for new drawings of Sonic 2. Oh, the principal is also they're coming. To be gay, which Chris feels justifies his homophobia. I was abused by one. A homosexual principal at my elementary school slapped me on his lap, said some offensive things to me, and I felt uncomfortable. Even though Chris's accounts of the events could not be verified, it is... Let me get re real quick, even though I was joking a little bit earlier, I'm not laughing at... Um children being abused it's just really fucking awkward and when you look at the bigger picture of of chris chan my god this dude and, and who you know what who knows to believe anyway like there's a lot of things that chris chan said in the past that's like you know what i mean like you you really don't know what to believe anyway when it comes to him so not unlikely that an event like this what's up matt <laughs> should never have been given access to the internet behind their attacks Oh yeah. Whether him being restrained and being assaulted by the principal were separate or related events. I mean, he's kind of a cute little kid, right? Poor guy. Possible that he may have been restrained and verbally abused as a form of disciplinary action, and even placed in a scream room, which was a fairly common school installation for dealing with autistic children up until the mid 1990s. I remember a scream room in my elementary school. I'm not gonna lie. Back in the day, though, some of those special ed kids were fucking, like, violent. I don't know about y'all, but there was this one kid. Uh, he used to literally beat the fuck out of people that just walked by him in the hallway. Like, when I was when I was elementary school, like, some of those special ed kids, man, you don't fuck around. They'll fuck you up. Like, I remember we were walking to lunch, and one of them just flat out grabbed, like, somebody out of the line. They didn't really got like inc do inclusion yet back like in the eighties, early nineties. But one of them like walked by a uh, special ed kid, and that special ed kid just like fucking went postal on him and just fucking beat the fuck out of him. Whatever event transpired, it forced Chris's parents to take him away from Nathaniel Green Elementary School. To further things, they took the case to Green County Court. After the school board threatened to take Chris out of mainstream education and instate him into a special needs school, the Chandlers dropped the case. For the remainder of the school year, he was homeschooled. Homeschooling! It was around this tumultuous time that young Christopher had an uplifting oh. experience that would change his life. Song the Hedgehog! During a shopping trip in Richmond, possibly in December 1992, but in other accounts, he stated that it was 1989, he came across the Leonard Bernstein Symphony Orchestra a show comprised of animatronic characters. This looks pretty cool. It's like at the Regency Square a fancy mall. Chuck E. Cheese. The conductor, Leonard <laughs> Bernstein, is made to be fully interactive with his audience with the help of a human... That's pretty fucking cool. Scenes. On this blessed day, the turnout for the show was weak, so Chris got extra attention from the bear. 
When Leonard asked him his name, the person controlling the animatronic misheard it and answered back, calling him Christian. The boy took this as a profound sign and felt that he should be called Christian. Christian. The rest was history, guys, of a fucking robot bear at the mall motivated Chris Chan to call himself Christian. The malls were so much cooler back then. I remember my mall had like a Muppet um, safety belt presentation where you would get like on a little car and they would be like, you know, use your belt. And then you would go to like different areas. And I remember there was a van that had a family of like gonzos in it. It was really cool. Every time I went to the mall, I would I would make my mom let me ride it. It was like awesome. I love the Muppets. <laughs> Kermit the Frog here. But uh, yeah, um, malls are something else. You know what? Um, hey, what's up, Chris B? What's up, Ethan Finnegan? I'm going to quote one of... Stefano says, I'm going to quote one of my favorite movies here, Manhunter. My heart bleeds for him as a child. Someone took a kid and manufactured a monster. At the same time as an adult, he's e irredeemable. Yeah, don't... I have a soft heart for some people that, I guess had quote unquote rough lives but there's a lot of stuff that chris chan does as an adult that's fucking definitely irredeemable he's not innocent anymore you know what i mean but also i think the lights are on but nobody's home at the same time when it comes to chris chan and again you you did you gotta just look at the freaking train wreck man like sometimes it's like holy moly again i never met chris chan i could have if i would have went to uh too many games 2018 Chris Chan was actually there and I believe they had like a meltdown on the vendor floor where they like, <laughs> like just like went in the fetal position and stayed there and, and wouldn't move. And I think they got kicked out of the convention too. Don't call me. I think there's a clip online of that actually. What's up, Oscar? Chris to continue and yeah, somebody said we're getting weird on Wednesday. Chris yes, to Chesterfield County crispy while Barbara remained in the family house in Rutgersville with Patty so she could keep working. Christian enrolled in Providence Middle School in Richmond. He looked back fondly over his time here, giving special credit to his teacher, Virginia Sanford. She was the most influential teacher in my life. During my years at Providence Middle School, she taught me better social skills, how to better cope with other people bullies and life with a positive and fun tomboyish attitude she was a teacher any child would be most proud to look up to so that was his favorite life. teacher he also forged a friendship with look at that debonair motherfucker with the tie older than him he lost romantic interest in her when he saw her smoking they would often hang out together at the bus stop he would sometimes give her money hey fanny pack look at the fanny pack and attention Chris would later realize that Natasha was, in a sense, a friend with benefits. Friend with she would benefits? Stay with him and be friendly in exchange for a monetary reward from Bob. Bob knew that his son had little hope in forming true friendships otherwise. Damn. Did they just say that. Did they just say that that girl was paid by his dad to be his friend? That's fucking sad. Jeez. Was, did I hear that right? Was that girl somebody that the dad paid to be, like, his friend? Fuck. Imagine, like, your parents on the down low, like, paying people to be your fucking friend. Like, at that young of an age, like, middle school. Jesus. I didn't know that. I'm learning new shit. That's kind of sad. That made me all sad. Now I feel bad. <laughs> all right. TV show is on the air. In the fall of 93, Sega, the video game developer, held a watch and win sweepstakes contest. Sonic says. Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon. I used to watch the, the fuck out of this cartoon. A $1,000 shopping spree at KB Toys. And that winner was Chris. Christian is one of only about 100 winners nationally. Oh, shit. $1,000 worth of Sega games and equipment. For his parents, it's just another example of how... He won $1,000 worth of Sega games and equipment. And what are the odds? What are the odds in life that Chris Chan was the person that won that contest that Sega did? Like, isn't life, isn't life fucking kind of weird? Like, he won that Sega contest. <laughs> 
Like, of all people in the world in, the, in history, the guy that fucking goes nuts later on in life wins that Sega contest. Well, he's doing. Christian is a high-functioning autistic child. This past fall, on his own initiative, he entered a contest based on a favorite cartoon character. What I had to do was exactly what side the edge of a cartoon, and I'd listen to what side says at the end of it, and write it down for a whole week, and then I had to mail it in, and I had to be drawn out of a hat, and I just won. Like, fucking... How do they find that footage? How do they know, like, oh my god, it just amazes me how well the internet works. Like, it took us, what, a decade to find Bin Laden, but they could sure as fuck pull up footage of Chris Chan being interviewed by his local news. <laughs> like, like, how do they, the internet's crazy. And Christian's father says it only takes a few hours for him to master an electronic game and then move on to another. I can't master any of them. That's it for now. And it's this is the first of many competitions that he entered during his life and has cemented itself as a likely key reinforcer to his future sense of entitlement. His future sense of entitlement. On December 29th, 1993, the Richmond Times-Dispatch published an article about Christian's magical encounter with Leonard Bernstein entitled, It Took a Talking Bear to Give the Name a Young Boy Loves. The boy's father recounts the events of the day. Look at this. Since Newspapers the written about him. Season, on a Thursday afternoon, the crowd was light. The conversation between Leonard and Christopher lasted about an hour. Christopher was spellbound. Something unusual happened during that conversation. When Leonard Bernstein... In a What's up, Raz? What's up, Melinda? ...asked Christopher his name, the bear must have misunderstood what the boy replied. Leonard started calling our son Christian. What better name for the Christmas season? And the name stuck like glue. From that time on, for the past year, his name has been Christian Weston Chandler. Christian is very emphatic about that. They found newspaper articles about him. ...into the family situation. <laughs> Christopher is a high-functioning autistic child. While intellectually, his age level is 12 or 13. Socially, he is around age 7 or 8. So, yes. socially, he was half his age. So when he was 12 or 13, he was socially, I guess, I guess maturity level, 7 or 8 years old. So, for his age, that would be kind of awkward. Like, when you're 12, 13, you're like in what? 7th, 8th grade? Yeah, that probably didn't definitely help the era that he grew up in. You know, if he was probably born 20 years later in his life, he probably would have ended up an okay kid, honestly. But it was probably rough for him back in the day. Some behavior problems with his peers and relates better with children a few years younger than him. The Green County school system was not equipped to teach an autistic child, Mr. Chandler said. The Chesterfield County School System has accepted him with open arms. The article also mentions that Bob had originally wanted to name his son Christian, but had chickened out. It is unclear what scared him off from naming his child Christian. In any case, the following year, the boy had his name legally changed to Christian. Ah, Western so he Chandler. legally changed his name. In the spring of 96, Barbara retired from her secretarial position at Virginia That's his mom. Power and moved in with Bob and Chris reuniting the boy with Patty the dog. In late spring, Chris graduated from Providence Middle School. As a parting gift, Mrs. Sanford wrote a personal, touching, and prophetic letter to Chris. Well, it's been three years now at Providence, and it's all over. Where has the time gone to? The most important parting words I can leave you with, well, are to always remember this. You show people where your weak points are located, then they will know how to push your button. If you never show them, they will never know. I hope you will have an enjoyable summer and come back to visit. Do your very best at Manchester, put your best foot forward, and treat others as you wish to be treated. Love, Mrs. Sanford. His teacher wrote him that. in question happened to be Manchester High School, where, according to Christian, he spent the happiest years of his life. Okay, so he enjoyed his high school life. That's good. I didn't know that. My happiest years of my life were high school too. I think I enjoyed my high school. I don't know about y'all. I my my high school years were awesome. I was fucking dating a lot of girls. 
<laughs> making out with a lot of girls, going on a lot of dates. I had a badass car. I had a badass job. So good on him. I didn't know he enjoyed his high school years. semesters, he studied Spanish, of which he has a very loose grasp. For class assignments, he adopted a Spanish name, Ricardo, a common practice for students in order to better get into character and the culture of the language. However, Christian got too into character. I've visited old teachers before. Outside of Spanish, like I've gone to my high school and, and visited my teachers now. When riding on the I just got to check in in the front office. Right in front of the bus door, so he could always get off the fastest. However, during his freshman year, he got into an altercation with another boy who uh -oh. wanted to be off the bus first. He punched Christian in the face, uh -oh. knocking his glasses off. In order to resolve the issue, Chris was forced to take the special ed bus to school from then on. Which so some fucker fuck with our boy Chris punched the glasses off his face and made him have to ride the special ed bus deeply affected him he always felt very uncomfortable associating with others whom he called slow in the minds you couldn't wait to get out of high school high school was awesome mentally challenged person who could hardly ever speak other than you didn't like high school, Stefano? On the back of the head for his own laugh. High school is legit for me. Teacher who rode on the bus talked with his brother about it, and he kept him from bopping me. But having to put up with his nonsensical slur talk was still just as cringy and horrifying. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Among his other activities, he served as a water boy and allegedly. Hey, good for him. For the school basketball team. He was involved with the sports team, even if it was as a water boy. Preparing, one of Christian's only male friends. Oh, there we go. Chris had always gravitated towards girls, and at Manchester, this was no exception. Oh man, he had a group of dude, he's got a fucking harem. Gal pals. Gal pals. Okay. I mean, what are they eating? Is that barbecue chips? Sandwiches. That's such a '90s photo, by the way, man. Nothing beats '90s girls. I don't give a fuck what any of y'all say. 90s girls all the way. Among the first that he met was Molly Quarles, a cheerleader at the time whom he met as a freshman. He fondly remembered them being paired up during a matchup event for Valentine's Day. Laura Beth Dorazio was another cheerleader Chris met and fell for. Hey, he was friends but with all the cheerleaders. He had a crush on her. She told him that she would like them to remain just as friends. Damn, my Tiffany boy got Allen shut was down. To be a real good girl to Chris. And he has described her as a bit of a tomboy. And she she friend zoned his ass. Damn. And a peppermint patty to his Charlie Brown. Kelly Andes was his biggest crush and says they were high school sweethearts, even though they were never in an actual relationship together. He was in a relationship with her. She just was single. <laughs> How's it go? When my girl thinks she's in a relationship with me, but I'm single. I forget what the meme is, but that's such a 90s Sarah fucking... Sarah was in the same chemistry class along with Kelly and Chris. Sarah had a boyfriend at the time, and Chris watched them interact, hoping to experience that kind of relationship one day. It was fun to just watch them... Man, look at his other. fucking stash. Look at that stash, y'all. My boy rocking the fucking stash. I should do the all stash. I should do it. Just porn stash it up. Won't be the last time he gets the friend zone treatment. You're not wrong. Hey, we're at 26 likes, guys. Why the hell aren't we at 30 yet? We have 30 people watching. Why are we just at 26? Let's get them likes up if you haven't hit that like button yet. Share the stream out too, and I got the fucking hiccups. Holy smokes. Mm-mm. 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 All right, let's go. I could have learned from that, but my autism and normal social phobias held me back then. Miranda Mitchell was the big brain in his circle of friends and shared computer graphics class with Christian. His group of gal pals were possibly not genuinely interested in a friendship with Chris, but rather stayed with him out of pity or as protection. A later Damn. comment made by Chris suggests that the group had made an arrangement with Bob and or the principal of the high school. So, Chris later on suspected that they made an arrangement with his dad or with the principal at the high school to be friendly with him? See, that's that's the thing that I start to question is, like, is that later on, like, 
whatever, like, I guess, schizophrenia or whatever Chris Chan might have that he starts to, like, just make assumptions like that? Or is it fact? Like, is it proven that his dad was making deals with uh, female classmates to be his friends or not? Or is that just something that he feels his dad did? Because I'm going to be honest, if, if I had a kid that was, like, a loser, it would hurt. But I don't know if I would go to the lengths to, like, monetarily compensate people to be friends with my son. Is, was there any ever proof of that, that the dad did that? That kind of arrangement doesn't seem too right with me. You're basically playing with someone's life, never mind their self-esteem. Well, if the dad did do it, I could see on paper the heart being in the right place. But I don't think the dad did that. Was that ever proven? I don't think so. Concerning schoolwork, there is a wealth of information that has been attained which helps to refute his previous claims that he held an honor roll streak all throughout high school. For one of his assignments... How do they even have his fucking assignments? Offering some more information about their life experiences. Where, where, okay, did Chris Chan literally, like, upload or scan every single aspect of his life? How do they get access to his old assignments? How does it... I don't understand how that works. Like this, this dude's life is all over the fucking internet. Assignments, old photos, of his dogs. <laughs> like, like, what the fuck? For the question. What's up, Craig? Choose to have children. They answered, "It's nice to have kids." For what adjustments did you have to make after your first child arrived? They answered, "Laughter from four kids and three situations," referring to their troubled past marriages and estranged children. Interestingly. When asked about what has been the hardest part about parenting, the answer was dealing with the school system. In another assignment concerning families, Chris inserted mathematical equations into his definitions, making them hard to read and understand. For example, he defined a Real quick, family as a mother. Because I went to school to be a teacher. Just pet peeve of mine. If you don't write in black or blue fucking ink, I'm automatically giving you a fucking zero. <laughs> like like writing in pink like that just fucking irritates me i was i was an english literature teacher for uh juniors and seniors and if they didn't write in black or blue ink i would be fucking pissed like i would automatically give like a failing grade for that like that was in the syllabus <laughs> just just a random fucking pet peeve of mine other and X is more than or equal to one child sharing the same household. He also described adoption as a right to raise a child who is biologically their own. Christian took part in a parenting exercise in which he wore an empathy belly to simulate the feeling of being a pregnant woman. What the fuck? I would never wear one of those. Experience. Having a belly like a pregnant woman was really an awkward experience. When I tried to get my pencil bag <laughs> out of my backpack, fuck? his belly held me back. Hold on. Pressure on my left. What class is making you wear empathy bellies? What fucking school did he go to? Like, I know, like, I, I get it. Some people do it as, like, a chore if you're actually, like, with a parent. But what high school makes you wear empathy bellies? Even in the 90s, that looked like that was in 99. Jesus Christ. Leg. Luckily, my arms were long, but if they were any shorter, I would have had... Self-documented is a trait of, do of locales. While yeah, I that's true. The, chair, the belly made it uncomfortable for me to cross my legs. And while my legs were separated, it put pressure on my private part, which gave me a strange, weird feeling. He wrote an essay about Japan's involvement in World War II. Look at all this! It should be noted that he addressed himself as Ricardo W. Chandler, with Christian placed in parentheses and wrote English in Spanish. <laughs> the teacher justly corrected this. According to Chris, the war was a very tragic event with guns, insults, and yuck. He continues, the Japanese and Americans had deemed glowering at each other like boxers from opposite corners of a 5,000 mile ring waiting for the bout to begin. So the US and Japan really wanted to get it on. What? He also quoted that President Woodrow Wilson tried to get Japan to withdraw from Shandong. Christian's essay ended up being a mishmash of events of both world wars. 
In addition, that's what it sounds like. Books. However, all of his findings could be found within the first eight pages. The teacher commented, restate thesis. There is a page oh man, thesis is used to be such a fucking annoying paper, thing. Which most likely was a class activity in which the students wrote nice things to each other in order to promote acceptance. The messages left for Chris read very bland, such as, I like your clothes. Is it very <laughs> funny? They couldn't compliment compliment anything else except I like your clothes Christian a nice person okay funny you are a nice person nice watch you tell great jokes and you tell fun jokes but perhaps the most baffling piece of writing that there is on record is his 13 lucky writing tips an assignment for English class in which he switches four tips in to what most closely resembles Spanish in any case, it is little more than unintelligible. Garbage. Why is he writing in Spanglish? Standard written English. Do not use contractions in formal writing. You must have a thesis statement in each. I don't have any beer with me, Oscar, or else I would. Self finale, estance de introductori paragrafe. Tu escribes de literature. A thesis include el llama de author y llama de work. Los paragraphs soporte y relate que el. Why do you start going into Spanish? What the fuck is that? I've never seen anybody write in Spanglish. Like, I, I can accept Spanglish for, like, talking, but I've never seen anybody write in Spanglish. What the hell? Paragraphs tienes el topic estances hablan el unifying concepto de el paragraph. Los details support y relate a el topic estance de paragraph. Necesitas los adecuate soporte details. Escribe el literatore el presente tense. Necesitas tres muchaco mirar de puente. Necesitas creas muy bien tu escribes crea sense y es muy logical. Cheques to escribir muy <laughs> carefully. From this that was supposed to be an English assignment. Seen that he failed all but two of his 14 assignments, earning a D plus for the year. At age 16, Chris wrote a poem entitled Song of Christian for his class loosely based on Walt Whitman's Song of Myself. He decided to record his creation for posterity. Okay, here we go. The video itself is poorly lit, but there isn't much to see anyway. I hear America singing as I sing of myself, and you experience as I experience. The problems of myself are my problems. The youth of the young singing cries a happiness. The children's song is song of laughter. At age six weeks, I sang the song of laughter. I think he was from Virginia. If I'm not mistaken, Rich. My song that I sing, although I talk well, my peer relationship is low and my loneliness is off the scale. Anyway, that's my poem. Beyond just reciting the poem, he pretends to be the enthusiastic host of the Christian Chandler show. I used to mess around with my re video recorder and microphone recorder and all that. Wonder if I have any old home videos I've made like that. <laughs> Cringe. Good evening, friends, and welcome to the Christian Chandler Show. Today's topic is he then rambles on about his fascination with the Sonic the Hedgehog universe and talks about Bionic the Hedgehog. His first sounds like butters, which he came up with during basketball. Oh, here we go. And then I have science fun that helps, of course, tales that flies. He's starting to draw Sonic stuff now. And Bionic, well, you heard rumors about Bionic. He's that science brother I made myself, who's that very good basketball player and mechanic. So he made a character called Bionic. Sonic's brother, who's a very good basketball player and mechanic. So not Sonic Chew yet. Bionic, the original creation. Uh, I can tell you the background story on him. He proceeds to rent about receiving... Talk Boy. Yeah, I never got a Talk I Boy either. I thought that's about time I sign off. But uh, before I go, I just one thing to say to uh, the teacher. Enough in English class? You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> I mean an F. I do not even know when was the last time I got an F. I mean, who knows? It could have been back in old Green County. That stupid place. Sheesh. That Green County Primary. Actually, it was a nice school, but then it came the thing of Green Elementary. 
That's why I got the F. Anyway, that many years go by. Then you came along and gave me an F. I made a star of a night and you just lowered it, lowered it, lowered it. I'm getting sick of time. He's bitching about his F. What do you have against all I guess the handicapped children anyway? I mean, I know my handicap is autism, and I'm not afraid to admit it. And you, Mrs. Bird, I think that F is very disrespectful. I mean, I am very emotional about it. <laughs> Yeah. Was that for an assignment or was that just Around for fun? At the same time, he made a series of stop motion videos of races set in his Lego made town called Quickville, based on his own initial. Hey, I remember that. Made with a Game Boy camera, which yeah, I remember the Game Boy camera. That was legit. Photos, or alternatively, low quality stop motion video. The awkward frame rate makes it difficult to discern what is actually going on. But it is important to note that all the racers are named either after pop culture characters that Christian idolized or people he knew in real life. This is the earliest account of Chris using people to play out his fantasies. The hmm. biggest trend in kids' toy history, it's multi, multi billion dollars. Pokemon! Throughout the late 1990s, the Pokemon franchise Here we go, guys. Spreading across North America, with Chris keeping a keen eye on it. He began playing the trading card game and included illustrations of Pokemon characters in his Spanish homework. He also wrote a lengthy essay detailing how the Pokemon came into their Pokeballs, with which his teacher was very pleased. The year 1999 marked the birth of I was a the freshman in 99. This was a designated portion of the wall which displayed Pokemon trading cards that Chris made himself. It featured original Pokemon such as a female Pikachu called Chikachu. Pikachu. Oh, you know what? That's actually pretty fucking creative. Cards that Chris made himself. It featured original Pokemon such as a female Chikachu. <laughs> Tail ring, flip a coin of heads prevent all effects of attack, including damage done to Chikachu. Boyfriends does 10 damage plus 10 more for each Pikachu in play. All right. Female Pikachu called <laughs> Chikachu. Chikachu. And Plotistic, a plant which is autistic. Chris himself also appeared several times. Look at that Dark His Christian. grew to a point that he would dress up as the Pokemon character Ash Ketchum out in public. There we go. Around mid-1999, Christian launched his first website. Oh man, I used to make websites all the time. GeoCities, Angel Fire. Cementing the moniker, Quick. It was soon replaced by Quick's Pokeside 2 with a new logo designed by Miranda. He updated it with personal and Pokemon related news here semi regularly for the next year. There we go. This year also marked Christian's first visit to the game place. What's up, little zitty? Store, which allowed returning customers to play video games. Look at that fanny pack. Trading card games. It quickly became his weekly haunt. The Pokemon craze was captured on film. Oh shit, look at that Austin 316 shirt right here in the middle. That takes me back, like my middle school days when we used to wear all the pro wrestling shirts to school. Never heard of Chris Chan. You'll go back under your rock. A lot of people haven't. I, I heard about him for the first time like in 2018 or so. when I After I saw the Too Many Games uh, meltdown when he like Went in the fetal position. I, the clips on YouTube or something. He was like in the middle of the vendor floor at too many games, and he like went into the, like the fetal position. NBC affiliates WWBT News. The report featured excited young kids playing the game and trying to explain the phenomenon. How do you play the game? I remember when the Pokemon cards first came out. Their bewildered. I had a friend named Jonathan that was. I'm watching and and. Uh... I still have no clue. Oh, about them. <laughs> and the 17-year-old Chris in action. Look at that. What are the odds? So he, he won a Sonic the Hedgehog contest. He had newspaper articles written about him. He's been on the news multiple times before he was even, like, 18. Like, he was featured in this Pokemon news thing. Oh, boy. What's up, Asian Sleepy? So if you had the time to tell me. To commemorate Valentine's Day of the year 2000, Christian wrote a Valentine's Day hymn 
a free verse effort in which he reveals that he holds very <laughs> should have kept all the original pokemon cards and the predetermined rules of etiquette for men and women. lightning does strike twice on a date the man could not pay the bill so his date slammed her door in his face the man's coat over a puddle the maiden walks then the man trips and pays the laundry bill under the moonlight what a random the poem of the world's kiss but unfortunately for a few they are interrupted by their parents he uploaded it onto his website. Ten days later, Chris celebrated his 18th birthday, a date which he held in the highest regard. Among the guests in attendance were a handful of Christian's gal pals and his half brother Cole. Nearly three. Oh, I didn't know he had a half brother. Fact, he reminisced about the event. I will never forget my 18th birthday party. It was the best of the rest. The weekend before my real birthday, my mother and I prepared for the party I was going to host that day. We hung balloons and streamers, and we laid refreshments on the table. At the door was I had a good 18th. high school amigas, and good 18th them birthday. A we ate pepperoni pizza and drank Pepsi. It was great. As mother lit the candles, I was filling up with ecstasy. After I blew the candles, I was presented with a big jawbreaker from Kelly. An R.L. Stein novel from Sarah. R.L. Stein, that takes me back. From Miranda, and a rabbit doll with jelly beans from Tiffany. We watched Good Burger and had Good fun. Burger. After they left. Oh shit! Them. Dreamcast. My boy got a, a Dreamcast, y'all. From Tiffany. Look, hold on. We watched Good Burger and had fun. Boy got the Dreamcast. He was fucking big pimping. After they left, it was done. What did I wish for? I'm not telling. Even though he seemed pleased that his gal pals came to celebrate, he was never pictured together with them, preferring to sit alone. He is also photographed wearing a pair of jeans with a suspicious stain on his crotch. Suspicious Some stain on the crotch? That it is dried semen, but it what is the fuck? Like Hold on! Whoa, 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 whoa. With design never pictured together. He is also photographed wearing a pair of jeans with a suspicious My boy. on his crotch. Some have speculated that it is dried semen. But it Dry is semen. What do you guys think? Let's get a poll. Is that semen or is it bleach or is it just dried food or something? What do you guys think? <laughs> Stefano says he'd rather not know. Well, what y'all's what y'all's gauge on this? Do you think it was dry semen? That doesn't look like dried semen to me. Not that I know what dried semen looks like. Ice cream. Yeah, okay. We got toothpaste, ice cream, cake icing. All right. You know, some of you guys are giving, giving some, uh, you know, it could be eggs, could be icing. It was a birthday party, right? Doesn't necessarily have to be a uh, dry jism. Elmer's glue. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's go on. It's unlikely. About a month later, Chris was tasked with designing a CD jewel case for his graphic design class. On the fateful day on March 17th, 2000, I wanted to feature on my favorite hit CD cover, Lifelong Hero, Sonic the Hedgehog, and cute newer character, Pikachu, but copyrighted characters were prohibited from the project. So, in my mind, I pondered and pondered. Here we go, history. History is going to be made right here, guys. The thing that changes it all. Sonic and Pikachu combined. Sonic and Pikachu combined, baby. Copyright. He combined Sonic the Hedgehog and Pikachu to create Sonichu. Sonichu. <laughs> history was made. Right at that moment for that class project for the plastic CD case. Pokemon, which Christian considers to be one of his greatest life accomplishments. That's the his CD accomplishment. Itself consists of Pokemon, Sonic, and Mario related to music with intermittent appearances we go. of old time jazz from artists such as Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby, undoubtedly an influence from his father. Another month later, Chris had to document a week of his life for a school project. The result was A Week with Christian W. Chandler, a, a self-documentary, self which detailed the events of his life from April 29th Not to Sonic April 2000. Hey, don't you disrespect Sonic 
with a discolored ghostly sonic below. He writes it in the third person, as if followed by a documentary crew. On April 29th, he visits Books a Million to participate in the Pokemon Trading Card Game League. Afterwards, he enters a costume contest, and since he wore his, yeah. his regular Ash Ketchum outfit, he wins and receives a cool t-shirt. He wants something else. The following day, My boy's the contest the king, y'all. ...to their old house in Rutgersville. The next day, he goes to high school. He uses a tripod to help take pictures of himself. During class, Mr. Goss discussed the difference between Shakespeare's world and the real world of today. Christian rested his eyes after Mr. Goss's discussion and before the bell rang. Next, he had trigonometry. I'd hate to be Christian when his nerves kicked into action after waking up from a naughty snooze cruise, but I was. Next was computer graphics. It was great for he him. He had some interesting classroom assignments. His own CD cover. Next was Spanish too. He took a quiz today, but I think he feels confident in his work. And finally, after a hard odd day, he rides home on a bus. But unfortunately, it had a few slow in the minds on. Wow, is he insulting special ed people? <laughs> Says, uh, unfortunately, had a flu, a few slow in the minds on the bus. What's up, three frame? This feels like a warped, real life version of the Truman Show. <laughs> oh man. Whew, that's a that's a way of putting it. On it. The following day, he repeats the routine of snoozing through class, and that on evening, oh, I used to sleep he all the fucking time in class. Sarah. I'm not gonna lie. Day, I was a king of sleeping through high school. Activities at home, which mostly consist of playing video games and managing his website. The next day, he talks about working in computer graphics class and making a Mother of the Year award for Barbara which he plans to give to her on Mother's Day. For the final day's report, Chris states that it was a difficult Friday. One of his duties included taking part in a senior group photo. After the long wait for the pictures to be taken, being crowded like a sardine surrounded by immature teenage boys, and having the hot, hot sun shining down on him and everyone else, he went back to the shady entrance. After the photo shoot, Chris was picked up by his dad. So I guess he had to make like a photo shoot, a like a like a documentary of his life. W. Chandler, the autistic boy that has made it this far. Colon close parentheses. Colon close parentheses. Chris wouldn't pass up an opportunity to go to the senior prom. Oh so boy! Bringing his mother along as a date. Wait a fucking minute. Okay, look, I'm not fucking gonna hate. I'm not, I'm not trying to hate, alright, I get it, I fucking get it, but when you look at what happened since then, like why he got arrested, and went to jail, and now you're looking back at this, and you see that he took his mom as his prom date, that's kind of fucking weird, if you think about it, was he, uh... I'm not trying to make a joke about what he did, but yeah, that definitely did not age well. Um, <laughs> his mom was his prom date. That alone is something sad. Uh, I'm not going to make fun too much of that, uh, <laughs> but he could have found a girl to take. I mean, I, maybe he was shy, but yeah, definitely did not age well that his mom's his prime his his prom date and also his mom is why he got arrested what did he do to his mom exactly google is your friend <laughs> google search uh less thanked uh but yeah less than zero uh, less than zero google it even though christian had labeled the set of photos as the senior prom it is possible that it was some other social gathering due to the fact that the event is held during the daytime Looking back on the prom, he claimed that he was naive about dating, unlike the other students. Out of pity, or out of genuine compassion, Tiffany asked Christian to dance. I hesitated at first. Do I really think he could have found another girl for prom? Yeah. He had, a, like, a harem of friends. He could have, one of them could have sympathized. And I thank her for dancing with me then. 
He felt that her willingness to dance with him meant that she was attracted to him and stated that if they were to meet again, they would start a relationship. Graduation. The end of high school. The end of his interactions with nope, his Nope, shit, pals. shit, I scrolled down. Most importantly, it was there the day are. Christian had to be recognized for his achievements. But unfortunately, this wasn't the case. I only got recognized for my grades with a star pin, yet they had more fancier awards for more important qualities. Why don't you just Google it? I've been highly recognized for my artistic talents. <laughs> I showed in my many art classes. What's up, McCoy? Award ceremonies before graduation day. I felt crestfallen greatly from not getting recognized for any of my talents. I excelled in math too, for the love of God. I was so f jealous. I was a high-functioning autistic boy who came way beyond out of his social shell, only to get zilch, nada, zip, a big fat zero. A big so fat zero. And out of sync. As a result of his heartbreak, he only went up on stage to receive his diploma without looking at anyone's face nor shaking anyone's hand. After the ceremony was over, he found himself an unoccupied. I wonder how many of his former classmates and cried. Eventually, at it, like mother, contributed to like came to console him, documenting his, his life on this event with shame and anger for years to come. Christian's time at high school is still thought of fondly by him, recalling his sweet memories of creating artistic projects for class and frequently. You give Chris Chan credit for graduating high school. Abruptly ended with that gloomy, rainy graduation. Yeah, but with the end of high school came the promise of a new world in college. A chance for the college years for Chris Chan experiences is the next and chapter the first steps to a brighter future. You got like that piano music. So what do you guys think so far? Those are early years. We haven't even gotten into the juicy stuff yet. Like nothing crazy has happened yet in the documentary. <laughs> nothing crazy yet. Nothing crazy. That was still pretty, pretty tame. Pretty tame. Let me get the next one up. We'll go. We'll go through this. Hopefully, we get some, some juicy stuff. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and start. Who's ready? Let's uh, give me some ones in the chat. Only seventy-two parts to go. <laughs> Only 72 more parts to go. Oh, it definitely will get real, real degenerate. Uh, make sure you guys smash that like. We're almost at, we're at 41 likes. Can we get to 50? Can we get to 50 likes? Let's get to 50 likes before we start the next one. Mighty Ben Stein. How's everybody doing? Who's here with me? Let me see who we got. We got Zombie Warrior 88. We got Three Frame, Stefano, Rich, Melinda, Ridge Eagle, M Mighty Ben Stein. We got Oscar. We got McCoy. We got Less Than Zero, Bill Bones. We got Steam Deck Hub. You're eating chips, man. I could use a little snack. You got Craig. It is weird. It's weird how much is documented. Like, how much is really out there. And, like, how much he... He's almost like a fucked up Forrest Gump, right? Like, he won a Sonic the Hedgehog contest. He's featured on the news a lot. Newspaper articles written about him. Like, this... this When he was younger, he fucking... He got a lot of coverage. He not... He's like a fucked up Forrest Gump, isn't he? Like Forrest Gump was everywhere. Somehow you don't think Hollywood would be making this up, taking this up for a story? Yeah, um, he definitely, um, I don't know. Could you imagine if Netflix decided to make a movie based on Chris Chan? But you know, for as fucked up as he is and fucked up with like everything that he's done, um... Now that he's out of jail, what the fuck is next? Right? Like, should he been released? I mean, he I guess it was like a court order that he got released or something, or he was released. Um, 
where the fuck is he at right now? A halfway house or something? Uh, is he even safe to be out? Like, is his mother safe? Like, is there any kind of, like, it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? Like, like, where the fuck is he at? I think he has court in August. But is, is he going to end up doing something stupid? Like, <laughs> like between now or then? I don't know. We're at 42 likes. Everybody in here that's watching right now already click like. Nobody safe. What's scary is if Chris Chan was watching this. Like, real quick. Like, what if Chris Chan was watching this right now? Like, he was Googling or YouTubing his name and... He saw that there was somebody live streaming the documentary about him. Or she, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> Chris Chan, don't come over here, please. Don't murder me. All right. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and start part two. Bung, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Poor guy. Part dose out of like 73. In the year 2000, the Chandlers came back to their family home in Rutgersville. And in August, at the behest of his parents, Christian began attending Piedmont, Virginia Community College, where the highest level degree students could attain was an associate degree. He went As back home. By illusions of grandeur, Chris chose to study marketing, but Bob quickly transferred him to a computer-aided drafting and design degree in the hopes that it would be a better fit for his challenged son and his future. According to the PVCC handbook of the time, this was a two-year degree worth 15 credits. In addition, he took English classes and even a tennis class. Apart from study, he continued to develop his Pokemon website and added more cards to his wall of originals, creating cards representing, among others, his beloved Sonichu. Sonichu! In October, he launched Quick's Sonichu site, a website devoted to his original character. So if you guys aren't aware, Sonichu is like his uh, bread and butter. <laughs> That's like the character he made that he started making comic book series and stuff, which we're going to see more about that here, but we're getting into the Sonichu stuff. Over the course of the year, the Sonichu family grew. He created Sonny, Sonichu's pre-evolutionary form, and dedicated a trading card to him. He also gave Sonichu a female companion, Rose Chu, based Rose on Chu. Rose from the Sonic franchise. After high school, contact with his gal pals was lost apart here much you of angry video game nerd Walter every weekend for about a year for christmas of that year christian made her a cd entitled songs for kelly as his gift oh man remember making mixtapes back in the day that's a big gesture for my boy he made her a fucking burn cd with songs on it like come on why didn't she get with my fucking boy? She could have prevented all this. She could have fucking just started dating Chris Chan and prevented all of this. She's the reason why. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> he incorporated a mini Sonichu into the artwork. Winter of 2000. Wonder if she still has that CD. For that was when Chris created his Sonichu medallion made of Crayola model magic. And so the medallion, Chris Chan wears that medallion everywhere. If you guys aren't aware of the lore for Chris Chan, that's like his fucking iconic uh, piece of material. I think that's the OG, though. I think something happens to the OG um, Sonichu medallion later on, and he has to make like a new one. And acrylic paints. Late 2000, I bought some Crayola Model Magic clay and I molded and crafted the first original Sonichu medallion that I wore around my neck with a makeshift chain, which I later replaced with a better necklace I bought from Pacific Sunwear at my mall. 
he would rarely be seen without it. The following year, he continued to develop the lore around Sonichu. He was pulling out the big guns. Yeah, he went for, for broke. Roshu, called Rosie and designing an Archie Comics cover for Sonic the Hedgehog versus Sonichu. For his yeah, it was something like that, Melinda. Birthday, he made her Surprise, he made it out. Sonichu yeah, I think it was a court order. In July, he filmed the City of Quickville tour using the stop motion feature on his Game Boy camera. The, the City of Quickville. was his yet unfinished Quickville made of Lego. He still hadn't settled on a naming system yet, so he spells it in two different ways. Gotta love that music. First with an I, then with an I and That is a. hideous. The tour is led by a Lego incarnation of Christian, and he shows two landmarks of the town. The water tower and go-kart pass before the video abruptly ends. I mean, also, you gotta give him a little bit of credit. He's, uh, he's creative. 30 frames at a time. In August... Christian got a job at Wendy's. Whoa, could you imagine? Hold on. Could you imagine going to go get like a big and not a big and tasty? That was McDonald's. I'm dating myself with the big and tasty. Who remembers the big and tasty? They don't got that sandwich anymore at McDonald's. Could you imagine going to Wendy's and getting like a Dave single and and Chris Chan's like <laughs> Chris Chan's like the guy behind the counter? Could you imagine that? Like now though, not not Chris Chan back then. Could you imagine like Chris Chan of today working like out of Wendy's? I'd walk right the fuck out. Mostly in charge of cleaning trays, tables, and carpet tile flooring, keeping the place neat and serving the customers. Yeah, he's a she now. Help. He alleges that he never quite saw eye to eye with a supervisor who disagreed with Chris's way of operating. According to one supposed event, he got his uniform dirty, and despite it being likely that he could have swapped with a clean spare at the establishment, he proceeded to continue to work with his sullied attire, and even attempted to wash it in the bathroom sink. According to Christian, a female co-worker gave him a hard time, pelting him with criticisms and insults, perhaps mistaking her constructive criticisms for attacks against his person. He also admitted You'd to leave Vigania? Neglecting other duties. Chris was fired from Wendy's in September oh, or October. I'm not surprised that he got fired. For a number of possible reasons. One of the most popular motives for his dismissal was that he performed a Donald... <laughs> I would like a Baconator, Chris Chan. Pepper Spray's customer. Do not call anyone. They're doing the bare minimum to be considered a she, in your opinion. Yeah, I don't think... I don't think Chan did the snippy snip right like i don't know um it's a touchy subject for sure <laughs> he does a donald duck, duck impression bringing him to tears wait holy shit so did he just say that he did a donald duck impression to a kid at the store and brought him to tears Chris was fired from Wendy's in September or October 2001 for a number of possible reasons one of the most popular motives for his dismissal was that he performed a Donald Duck impression to a child at the restaurant, bringing him to tears. In other accounts, he said that he was fired after he drew an unflattering caricature of an older female co-worker. Ah. Culmination was likely a culmination of Never draw your co-workers. It was also around this time that Chris ended his weekly calls to Kelly. He gave conflicting reasons for this. He first stated that he suffered from noviophobia, a term he coined, which he defines as a fear of speaking to a woman who may already be in a relationship, which convinced him that his calls were in vain. Initially, Chris stated that he was told by his mother that Kelly most likely already had a boyfriend, so he might as well quit his attempts. Damn. My boy didn't want to listen. <laughs> later, he changed his story, saying that he came to that realization all by himself. In other retellings, he said that he simply forgot to call her one weekend, and after he broke the routine, he didn't want to continue. My boy got out of the friend zone. He was like, fuck you, girl. Christian spent a tearful 21st birthday. For some reason, he was kicked out of English class by his male and possibly gay professor. Like many historical accounts of his life, he keeps changing the story. First, he said that the class was reading the book Wednesday's Child, which featured an autistic girl. He recounted that he told the professor that he was autistic as well, which resulted in a misunderstanding and Chris being forced to leave the class. Alternatively, he
he admitted what? to causing a disruption in class, writing in a report, exclamations you'd likely hear from a black person in church, which prompted his dismissal from the classroom. This ejection further increased his hate for- Oh, my boy, what the fuck? Oh, shit. Oh, skip back. Life. Wait, where are we at? Whoa, I skipped too far. Okay, here we go. Hang on. I fucked it up. I was trying to pause. Exclamation. There we go. I'm saying my boy with the third-party Dreamcast controller right there. Look at that. My boy with the third-party Dreamcast controller. What, he's got a Sonic the Hedgehog book right here? Is that Shadow? This right. ejection further increased his hate for men and gay men in general. RGT85, what is up, man? Watching a pursuit to find true love. Check the chat. Whom he called a boyfriend-free girl, he launched his love quest. However, finding that one special person in his life wasn't going to be easy. Christian didn't feel like he had the confidence to approach women on his own volition due to the infinitely high boyfriend factor. This term refers to the very high probability that any girl to whom he spoke already had a boyfriend, making it close to impossible to find his coveted boyfriend. The boyfriend girl. factor. By extension, every man who already had a girlfriend <laughs> was thought of by Chris with seething loathing. I'm gonna buy a shirt that looks just like that. I'm cosplaying as Chris Chan at my next convention. With the infinitely high boyfriend factor, I'm not fond of about 99.9999999996% Holy shit. of the total male population with a margin of... <laughs> With the infinitely high boyfriend factor, I'm not fond of about 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
If any men read this huge sign, mind your own business and to all men with girlfriends except Marys and Blacks, go jump off a cliff. What the fuck? Have a nice day. You would hang the sign up at the PBCC lobby. He had to add the in blacks because my boy ain't racist. And or sit beside it in the hopes of attracting potential mates. Based on the attraction sign and later comments, it is clear that instead of finding the love of his life, his quest for a sweetheart was more of a... You're not liking that he's out of jail because you live in the same area. To mother him and financially support him. You should go on the Chris Chan hunt for us, Game Master. Of months into his love right now, Game Master, you should go... On the, you should be the, my my troop on the ground, my feet on the ground. You need to go to wherever you think Chris Chan might be right now, and you need to scout for us. You need to go live and scout for us. Make it like Chris Chan hunt, like right now. Quest, Christian was met with an obstacle. Mary Lee Walsh, the Dean of Student Affairs, tore down his attraction sign and allegedly even tore it up in front of him. Ooh, the Dean took down his sign. The Dean was a cock block to my boy, Chris Chan. According to Chris, she yelled at him in a violent manner and said that his way of doing things would not get him a girlfriend. It is likely that Walsh may She's have not wrong. Fact, taken down his sign and told him that it was inappropriate as his methods were akin to soliciting sex on campus. You're not wrong. That kind of was... In any case... But this was pre-social media area, ma'am disheartened by this event it literally shattered my heart to almost nothing and murdered my soul in response to this attack christian made another sign which was quickly removed in a similar fashion this was to made be another sign of christian's make-believe conflict with mary lee walsh that will haunt him for most of his adult life so he got into like this fictional fan fiction. This is another thing guys do. They have girlfriends by choice and they like to write fan fiction. Like they come up with these like weird fictional stories in their head. That Mary Lee Walsh, that Dean is going to become like his arch nemesis in his comic books coming up. Like he legitimately, I'm surprised he didn't fucking try to kill her. If I'm going to be honest, like I'm not trying to like make light of the situation where I but she became his nemesis. Like the worst thing that that lady ever did to this guy was tear down his signs asking for a slender girlfriend, like on the real, like that became his enemy. Would I interview Chris on my channel? Uh, sure. <laughs> sure. No, I don't think it was a racist remark. I think it was him trying to not be racist. Like, he's like, all men except blacks can go jump off a cliff. Like, I guess he was trying to, like, kill, like, maybe he was getting picked up, picked on by uh, people at school and he didn't want to come off as racist. You grew up you were both kids. You met him sometime around 96. Bull. Ninja. Ninja Tanuki. Prove that. This is a this is the equivalent of setting a homeless guy on fire for entertainment. You can't prove. You're dead serious. I don't know. I don't know. I'll believe it if I saw evidence. EDP 445 is charging 100 for a one hour interview. What the fuck? <laughs> How much would Chris Chan charge for an interview? As an act of catharsis, Christian wrote a poem called Saddest Heart in the World, in which he refers Here we to go. in the most unkind of light. Lonesome and sad, lonesome and sad. The mastermind is very bad. In efforts of getting a boyfriend free gal, that female dog took my only idea for a fall. Heartbroken, sad, and very lonely. I may never remove my virginity. So he already On called her a female dog. Chris wrote a short story called Sonichu and Rose Chu, the <laughs> genesis of the love hogs. It establishes the origins of Sonichu and Rose Chu and also incorporates elements from the Sonic the Hedgehog lore, such as the Chaos Emeralds. In addition, the story features a lovely Pokemon trainer. Her name was Kel, short for Kelly. He published it on his Sonichu site. In June, Christian found work as a salesperson for Cutco, a cutlery retailer. Yo, 
It is unknown whether he actually managed to sell any knives. Why the fuck would they let that guy get anywhere near any fucking knives? Yeah, let's let's have this dude let's have this dude sell knives. Let's have this guy that's literally unstable sell fucking knives to people. <laughs> like what, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm honestly surprised he never went ape shit and postal on anybody, like legit. Like you think of all the fuck up people in this world, like my god. <laughs> Later testimonies prove that he was still in possession of unpurchased stock, holding on to some items more than a decade after he was employed. His tenure ended in August when his boss left the Charlottesville area. In August the newly formed band, Christian and the Hedgehog Boys, released their debut album. The band, which was led by Christian, and also featured Sonic, Sonichu, Shadow the Hedgehog, and Black uh, Sonichu. Hey, he was creative only for being in college. In Christian's head. The album entirely consisted of Christian singing melody-free vocals with original <laughs> lyrics over existing songs being played in the background. His songs covered a range of topics, That's, such as his search for love oh my in God. Sony the Cute Girl, based on I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys. Oh my God. God, man, I feel so fucking bad laughing about this, but I'm telling you guys, this just gets... This is not even the crazy stuff yet. This is still like... This dude still had like... There was hope for him at this time still in his life, honestly. And and he had the good intention. He he had good intention, right? <laughs> he just wanted a boyfriend free gal. He just wanted to get his dick wet. Alright? There's no harm in that. Tell me why I'm so stuck as a virgin with rage. Oh my god. Tell me why I'm stuck as a virgin with rage. Autism in A U T I S M <laughs> sung over the Backstreet Boys Larger Than Life. All right. And his Spanish skills in the Ricky Martin adaptation La Cocina and La Casa de Casanova. All right. Okay. I better not get copyright strike because of this shit. <laughs> Later that year, Chris wrote another poem. Sonichu's Ode to Rosechu, an attempt at depicting the romantic ties binding Sonichu and Rosechu. Oh Rosechu, you are as beautiful as a rose, though a zap bud is the flower that heals your woes. A zap bud. He once again reinstates his idealized views on relationships between men and women. If I evolve into your knight, I will protect you with my lance. Speed makes no difference, though you are slower than I. You dance in the field with such grace and style. Sigh. The poem closes with possibly the first utterance of a variant of Christian's commonly used term, sweetheart. Rosie, as often as birds tweet, will you be my lovely heart sweet? In October of 2003, Christian reunited with his childhood friend, Sarah, for her birthday. There we go. His childhood friend, Sarah. There's hope, guys. Do you guys think this ends good or do you think it ends bad with this childhood friend? What do you think? Let's get some voting. You think my boy's going to get his dick wet from this girl? Push one in the chat if you think so. Push two if you don't. I think he's... Uh, we got some hope. I think it's going to end very bad. Dose. Is this the one that locked him in the basement? I don't remember. Is this the girl that locked him in the basement? He shouldn't have brought the necklace. Yeah, my boy. He's meeting this girl and he has the necklace. He should have gave it to her, actually. She would have liked that. The special. It almost looks like she's wearing like a bridal veil. Occasion, he made her a present. A hand-drawn comic book detailing the complete Wait. history of their life together, entitled... He made her a comic book of their history. All right, that's some effort. Let's go. I bet she liked that. That wasn't creepy at all. What's next? Proposing with the Amiibos? Chris plus Sarah's life shares. 
It is from this work of literature that the majority of their interactions with each other has come to be known, including Sarah's supposed childhood bully. Oh, it is! That is the girl that made him... She locked him... Oh, no, no. She, uh, she told him Casper was underneath the house, and she went down there, and I guess, like, she tricked him or some shit. Yeah, okay. Chris completely neglects. Like most of his creative attempts, it is self-centered, bragging about his accomplishments concerning Sonichu. He also talks about her personal life, including her relationship with her boyfriend. As of some time before July 2000, Sarah has been up, tricky with panda? her boyfriend, Wes Isley, a magician who does parties. He closes the book with hope for the future. A special note from Christian to Sarah. I hope that we can hang together sometime, but for now and forever, we will always be good friends. To return the sentiment, Sarah decided to spend Christmas with the Chandlers. She spent Christmas. Chris. Okay, she at least spent Christmas with him, right? That's nice. Mm-hmm. Nintendo. On November 22nd, 2003, Christian filmed a documentary of his activities in the game Animal Crossing on the Nintendo GameCube, which he then sent to Nintendo for consideration. Chris narrates this hour-long tour of two of his cell let's towns, play. Quickville and Quick City. Since the documentary features a video game player narrating his activities while playing a game, this possibly makes Chris the first ever Let's Player in the modern understanding. There we go. He first ever modern Let's Player, my boy pioneering. You know, like comic books, music, Let's Plays. He's got it all. Hello, Nintendo. Welcome to my Animal Crossing for Nintendo GameCube. I am your host. My name is Christian Weston Chandler. I live in Rutgersville, Virginia. And I is 21 years old. And I play because I'm young at heart. Bless Today, his heart. We're going to take a tour of my so they are less than zero? Everything he produces, it includes Sonic Melinda, it was when he was a kid that he was tricked. Sonic Chew. He's wearing the clothes with the character on it. Like I said, you might remember his face. And there's his actual face. If you remember the rest of his body, you see the whole picture. Chris performs a spontaneous rendition of Yellow is a Mellow Color off the Sonic and the Hedgehog Boys album. Yellow is a mellow color. Yes, it is. It's a mellow color. Sonic you zaps and lightning. Hey, mellow color. <laughs> yeah. He also treats the audience. He sounds like Borat. So need a cute girl. Tell me why I'm stuck as a virgin with rage. Tell me why I still need a cute girl my age. Tell me why <laughs> I ain't never wanna hear you say I have a boyfriend. My boy hated boyfriends, did he? He previews the in-game diary that he keeps. As for a monthly journal entry here in November. Yeah, I try to get a girlfriend because I don't have a girlfriend. But He's going to have a girlfriend by choice. Let you guys read it. All right. Scroll down a little Dude, bit. he typed Scroll all down. that in Animal Crossing as his fucking journal it's entry? Poem because Jeez. I am an artist as well as a poet. I make a rhyme every time. He proceeds to give a tour of his bedroom. This is my bedroom. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Because I like to make things fun since you know I'm young at heart. As he unwittingly transfers his hoarding habits into a virtual environment, his bedroom in Animal Crossing closely replicates his real-life counterpart. Chris goes outside and comes across several characters who all seem to run back indoors at the very side of him. Around here, I want to show you my favorite character that I kind of got to know from the start. What the fuck? There's an Akuti. The NPCs run away from his character in the game. Wow, holy shit. Even the virtual Quickville Island to reveal that he mostly uses Even the virtual Animal story. Crossing characters don't like him. For the uh, extra items I uh, don't have room for at home. Yeah, I got a bunch. He reasserts his brand loyalty for Nintendo and decries their competitors. Speaking of which, you should make it's Sonic Heroes it should be Nintendo GameCube exclusive because it's Fox and PlayStation 2. My opinion is the same as yours. They both stink. Yeah, I do not even own them. I don't even want them. And that goes double for the PS. I was a Nintendo fanboy during That's the GameCube era. Systems. I had my GameCube for about almost a year and a half now. Got it on May 31st, 2002. I got your SNES, Nintendo 64, NES, 
I got the Genesis 301 with the uh, original Genesis 32X and Sega CD. As My well boy as going off on his gaming flex. So I got mostly all of them. I've been a Sonic fan forever, and that's why I'm glad that Sonic came to uh, Nintendo. He mentions that he likes to keep his surroundings clean by picking weeds. Oh, we look at this. There's a weed. I pick weeds, keep my town clean, as well as uh, quick safe. He also likes to keep active. Another weed. Why you know about that? GameCube's the best controller made? Yeah, I like GameCube controller. He introduces the viewers to his character, Crystal. Anyway, uh, this is Crystal. She's wearing the uh, rose chew look. There's a zap button on the door. I got Sanchi's rose chew mug right here. Near the end, Chris proclaims that he is. I used to play uh, the Animal Crossing on the Wii a lot. I didn't play the GameCube one so much, but the one on Wii I played a lot. With the two red eyes, I will tell you. Got that? That means high functionally autism because you can annoy the characters by talking to them too much. Shit, he definitely talked to them too much then. I may have autism, but since I'm high functional, I do all. I can do a lot of things. I mean, otherwise. I wouldn't be able to do this documentary I'm doing right now. But anyway, uh, for, the, for the submission of Nintendo Power, this has been a documentary narrated by Christian Weston Chandler. I wonder if somebody at Nintendo actually saw this. Because he submitted it. By now. He submitted all that Animal Crossing stuff to Nintendo for them to look at and possibly do like a documentary. I'm very curious if, if somebody at Nintendo actually sat down and watched that because that's a piece of like video game history right there. Like on the real, like imagine being that person that back then got like a VHS tape sent of, you know, somebody's Animal Crossing gameplay and that person turns out to be Chris Chan. <laughs> like think about it. Christian started 2004 with a new They did? Marriage. It was in the magazine? A girlfriend. I thought he was uh, featured just in like a letter in the magazine. I didn't know they actually showed his, like, talked about his documentary in the magazine. That's fucking crazy. Here we go, Sonic Chew. He drew a Sonic Chew comic strip, which also featured Rose Chew and Black Sonic Chew. This was the first time he included his characters in an illustrated storytelling setting. On the 6th, he went to get an eye exam. The optometrist in question happened to be Dr. David Chandler, Chris's brother from Bob's first marriage, who informed him for the first time that he had an eight-year-old niece named Savannah. That's his fucking half-brother. He wrote Hard Love Quest, a poem concerning his difficulties in finding a boyfriend-free girl. Without girlfriend love, he feels an older age, as he is still stuck as a virgin with rage. He searched low and high to Dude, every single fucking thing he writes, he literally described himself as a virgin with rage. <laughs> like like everything he wrote was like, I'm a virgin with rage. Like Jesus Christ. I'm so glad he didn't fucking kill anybody, because it sounds like he was pretty close to it. The only delay is the fear of being already beaten by a boyfriend. You bet they love the jingle, little jingle of the Backstreet Boys. Well, it's the end of another month, and I still don't have a girlfriend. Maybe my latest idea, the Sonic Shoes News Dash newsletter, will make the ladies take notice. Oh my God, the he's lettering. Oh Jesus! For Christian's creative ideas concerning Sonic Shoe and his poetry, issue one featured a couple of skits starring Sonic Shoe. <laughs> okay. He thinks this little website he made would get the girls to notice him, even though right here it just says, I'm a virgin, stuck with rage, and all this crap. The poem, Saddest Heart in the World, and a personal ad for himself, which was not unlike his attraction. That song, song stuck in your head. <laughs> is a very shy and very thoughtful person, and will only accept person-to-person -person encounters. When getting his attention, approach and say hi to him. Do not flirt from a distance. Tell me you why I'm a virgin stuck with rage. He'll be wearing I don't even know the song. <laughs> In addition to posting a digital copy onto his website, he distributed printed copies of the newsletter around PVCC campus as an alternative to his attraction site. Imagine if you were one of the lucky few that got one. Uh-oh. This lady, the dean, his arch nemesis, she's back, guys. 
She's going to fucking stop his ass. Oh, thank you so much for the follow, Wind Sunrise. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I don't know why I don't have the alerts. Give me a second. I don't know why the alerts are not up. But there we go. Thank you so much. So, yeah, his arch nemesis is going to put a stop to his newsletter. And desist order. In an email dated February 1st, Chris tried to settle out of court. Mary, I've slept on it, and I've realized that note hanging is not the way to get attention. <laughs> okay. And I don't really want to meet with either you nor Susan. No offense. I'll tell you what. Let's forget the meeting. And if you will allow my newsletter to stay in distribution, I will do all of the following. Oh, God. I will never hang notes on the wall again. I'll consider stopping my silent treatment on Susan. I'll consider knocking you and Susan up my scale of respect. Oh, my by God. Two points. Zero <laughs> equals no respect. Ten equals respect. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. He just told the dean, I'll consider knocking you and Susan up my scale of respect each by two points. Zero equals no respect. Ten equals respect. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. I'm stealing that. The next, the next time I have to fucking... The next time I have to personally, like, correspond with somebody, like, in a, a DM or an email or or something like that, I'm flat out going to be like, hey, if you do this for me, I'll consider knocking you up my scale by two points. Zero equals no respect. Ten equals respect. Walsh replied and insisted that they meet the following week <sighs> on February 9th. Christian recounted Hold on, what did she say? 10 equals respect. What did she say? Walsh replied and insisted that they meet the following. Oh, she just flat out ignored him. She's like, we're meeting you Monday, February 9th. I normally send students notice of appointments by mail, but I, you have asked that I correspond to email. It's necessary that, okay, so she didn't even fucking listen to his demands. Jesus Christ. Following week. On February 9th, Christian recounted the events of that meeting. Mary Lee Walsh made it illegal to distribute the news dash. I am very <laughs> angry at that XXXXX. In response, I plan to incite, to incite the, masses the masses and hope they demand the return of the news dash so oh my God. getting a girlfriend can be restored. I have also declared war on them as well. Dude, he's so fucking livid about his newsletter not not being able to be promoted. Oh my gosh. It was allegedly during this meeting where he performed his cursed Yehameha attack, which consisted of Chris mimicking the hand no way. The attack move from the anime series Dragon Ball Z and cursing people into experiencing bad luck. However, it is not certain whether he was inspired by the original occurrence of the Kamehameha or its parody featured in another anime, Excel Saga, to which Chris has definitely been exposed. Wait, he cursed Kamehameha? both Susan and Mary at this meeting? Did did he curse Kamehameha, the dean, and somebody else? The curse Yehemea? Oh my gosh. <laughs> She's fucking Christ. Mm. If Larry Bunny makes an apology video after your... I'd consider him knocking up by two respect points. Um, nah, maybe, maybe a half. <laughs> In March, Chris claimed that the kerfuffle concerning Walsh got his parents upset too. That XXXXX Mary Lee Walsh got on Dude, my- Dude, things are getting intense from a boy. All I'd been doing was trying to get a girlfriend. Is that too much to ask? I am very devastated. Due to my shattered heart that XXXXX caused unto me, my life sucks. Jeez. Completely disregarding her demands, he published issue 3 of Sonichu's News Dash, with most of the content themes remaining unaltered. However, his requirements for a boyfriend-free girl were tweaked a little bit. He was now looking for 18 to 22-year-olds. 18 to 22, so he upped it up by an age. <laughs> Uh, he was Dan Housen before his cool. Surprised they didn't just pay someone to be his girlfriend for a week. Yeah, 
They probably should have did that in hindsight. What's up, Tactical Soup? Guys, we're 45 likes. Can we get to 50, please? <laughs> Let's get some likes up. Let's get a like spike going on. I wish I had a fucking beer, by the way. Things are starting to get interesting now. He's uh, fighting with fucking people. What's up, Wesley? At least he knew he liked older women. I mean, he upped the age by one just because he turned 22. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. Was that the song by uh, T-Swift? All right, let's go. Since he had just turned 22 himself. In May of 2004, Nintendo Power Magazine published an article highlighting... Oh, here we go. You were right, um, Ninja. So the, he, this motherfucker is like literally like Forrest Gump. He was he won a Sonic contest. He had newspaper articles written about him. He fucking had all sorts of other shit. The Pokemon fucking news piece, and he got his documentary posted in fucking Nintendo. Power. Do I have this issue? You know what? I might. Which which one is it? Of two thousand four. Nintendo Power Magazine published an article. I might actually have that fucking Nintendo Power. I'll have to look. Highlighting Christian's Animal Crossing Holy video, shit. referring to Chris only as. Whoa, 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 whoa! Slow the phone. We got, we got some gifted memberships in the house. Falcro just gifted five YouTube memberships. Thank you, Falcro. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Can I get a hashtag Falcro in the chat, please? Can I get a hashtag Falcro in the chat for uh, gifting some memberships out there? Thank you so much, man. If you guys aren't channel members yet, you can see a couple people in here. Rich88, Falcro, Melinda, they have a ni uh, Raz. They all have a nice little channel member icon next to their name. If you ever want to join in, we got two different membership tiers, planning some exclusive content and things. Would appreciate it. I think we're at like around 28, 29, maybe 30 members. If you guys want to join in, it's help support the channel in a way that will be with exclusive, um, exclusive benefits and stuff like that. Just Craig is another channel member. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Let's get back on to this. I'm not sure which Nintendo Power issue this is. Maybe like 2004 or something like that. You'd have to like look it up. Run Force Run would be Bang Chris Chan Bang. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. Simply amazing. There's no other way to describe what we've received from Sonichu of Quickville. A full video documentary that walked us through his daily life. His opulent manor contained every manner of furniture. This is funny. The landscape was filled to the bursting point with all the animals who'd moved to his well-tended town. And Sonichu has customized everything about his town. Even many villagers have You think you have that issue? Nice. I, I might have it too. If I have it, I'll look at it. I'll make a video. Of PVCC's newspaper, the Forum, which look, he got in his newspaper at school. In an exclusive report. PVCC student Christian Chandler has dedicated many hours to his pastime. He is the creator of Sonichu, the electric hedgehog Pokemon. Yeah, everybody do a hashtag Falcro in the chat. Sonichu can run at high speeds. Smash that like if you don't, if you monster. haven't. Dude, Sonic could you imagine asking him to sign that issue? Supersonic was spat out by the monster and collided with a bystanding Pikachu, Chandler explained. According to this story, the power from the Chaos Emeralds transformed Pikachu into Sonichu. Chandler and the world he created for Sonichu were featured in the May 2004 issue of Nintendo Power. The place is called Quickville. The quick prefix are his initials, Christian Weston Chandler. Nintendo Power was apparently impressed with Chandler's work. During all this rigmarole, he continued to publish his news dash, but he updated his personal contact information to include a link to his Match.com profile, which he created to aid in his love quest. It was also around this time that he opened a MySpace account. 
He had a, uh, he submitted a Animal Crossing Let's Play. And TCG. I also like anime, Legos, and I love my parents. I also enjoy web design. He proceeds to list all the gaming consoles in his possession, finishing with the Pokemon catchphrase, gotta catch them all. Interestingly, he listed his occupation as student slash cartoonist. He explores his most desperate desires in his blurb. I am a bit shy, but I would enjoy the company of a beautiful girl who likes some of the things I do. I also like to have fun when I can, and I don't really like Somebody should have just gave this guy some pussy, man. Maybe that would have saved and I'm doing very well. That would have saved like so much. <laughs> a lot of men make false promises to their girlfriends, but I am totally different. When it comes to what I can offer, I can seriously promise care, respect, empathy, and love. I think that most girls deserve the world, and I would do my best to give it to them. In May 2004, he attended the Anime Mid-Atlantic Convention for the first time, where he met notable voice actress Monica Rial. She also sings opera very nicely, and she is a very nice, fun, and sweet person to hang around with. She sure made my day a sweet one. In Sonichu's News Dash, Issue 5, he introduces three new Sonichu characters. Three Ice new! Sonichu, based on himself, Wesley Sonichu, his quote-unquote rival, who's based on Sarah Hammer's boyfriend, Wes Isley, and Sarah Hammer Rose Chu. <laughs> so he made... Sarah herself. He made a character in after June, Sarah's boyfriend and one of Sarah. wedding anniversary of his parents, Chris made them a present, a dramatic retelling of the family's life via Animal Crossing. Through this videographic endeavor, he delves deep into the family's history. Hi, Mom and Dad. How are you doing? Oh, that lady went, the voice actor went against Vic? Oh, thank you, Raz. I appreciate it. Can I get a hashtag Raz in the chat, please? He says, great stream, more like this. I don't know why my donations alerts aren't coming up. As we explore how each of you were. Of course, first we'll travel back in time to the time of good old Robert Franklin Chandler Jr. He was a hip youngster back in his day. Thank you so much, though. I don't know why they're not coming up. I appreciate that, though, Raz. Thank you. Gamer from Mars did a four-part. Oh, there we go. Shit. It was all fucking late. Anagora Raziel donated 11 New Zealand dollars through Super Chat. Great stream, Eric. It all took forever. I need to figure out how to make that come up a lot sooner. He performs the same type of tour for Barbara. But back then she went to school and she worked hard. And see this uh, shirt here? That's her school color. Am I out for WrestleMania? I don't watch wrestling like as a fan, but I'm still gonna watch. Like, like I'm still gonna check WrestleMania out, but I don't like get into the stories like as a fan would. What's up, Christian? Yeah, yeah. She likes the old stuff. Get old stuff as well. So she got a. Samuel Crossing shit's kind of boring. I want loony, crazy, boyfriend-free. What's up, Tipster? Tipster uh, fucking Sammy. nation. Her, uh, they did not bury Sami Zayn. If you think he's buried, you have no idea what the term buried means. Tipster nation. Hashtag tipster. In, the kids, in, some, in some places, now, in the very few houses now, there's a lot happening in the uh, old days. How you doing, man? Good to see you here. Is, uh, the kitchen. We're watching some Chris Chan. You're praying for my family. Please pray for mine. Oh, everything good, Christian? Yeah. Chris Eric wants the tip. Hang on. They met over at Maddie's pub, see. I don't have a soundboard like Tipster does. I don't have the fancy soundboard like Tipster and Review Tech have. Um, but... I do want the tip. I love the tip. I want to play with the tip. <laughs> Alright, thank you for coming in, man. If you guys haven't checked out Tipster before, check out Tipster. Tipster Nation. 
she was watching uh, Bobby uh, sing up here. And well, she like she really liked his uh, singing. So uh, she, as father put it, she went up to him and then. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Well, I hope everything works out for you, thermo- Christian. Yeah. Anyway, she chased him down the hallway. Dude, are they gonna end Before this it. fucking uh, Animal Crossing bullshit? And, uh, that, Let's see the they fucked up uh, weird shit. Got to know I guess he's. Oh, do. He's and reenacting he his uh, his family's uh, <laughs> his parents' wedding anniversary. Yeah, it's very slow for sure. After reenacting their there wedding, we go. Let's go. Introduces himself into the picture. But anyway, when first comes love, then comes marriage, then they come along with their baby carriage. And that's why he's definitely a creative individual. There he is. He gives himself a tour of his own room. So anyway, this is my bedroom. And then returns to Bob's room. As a little retribution for... Uh, it's just crazy how much of this shit has been, like, archived. But since we don't have side-by-side on recording, we're play. We're going to play... Uh, Sitting under the apple tree. He proceeds to let the 1942 song Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree play in full. I'm glad they fast forwarded that so I don't have to have copyright. And now for uh, my mom and dad, know something special for this uh, video. <laughs> it's my way of saying happy anniversary to y'all. Happy butt anniversary. You almost said happy birthday. The video cuts to a drawing made with Mario Paint, which says, To mom and dad, happy anniversary. Thank you there for you go. my birth. Love, Christian C. You know what? That's sweet. I've never really done anything sweet for my parents. And then, uh... <laughs> Chris basically... Attraction sign in hand. Chris basically fucking elements. negates all this later on when he his fucking does the fucked up shit with his mom. Results. As in a diary entry dated August 1st, he announced, Well, it's another month. Still no girlfriend. This guy is horny. a new idea that I'm sure will reel in a girlfriend on a fateful red string. The idea concerning red string consisted of Christian tying a red string to a paper heart on which pick me up and bring me to my owner was written. The significance of using a red string was most likely That's a cute. to its appearance in the anime Excel Saga, and is a well-known <laughs> symbol in many Asian cultures. Hornier than me? No, I'm horny. But the difference is, is I, I could get fucked. And follow the red string leading back to him. It cannot be determined how successful this strategy could have been, because just four days after he employed the red string of fate, a mall security guard, which Chris referred to as a jerk op. Somebody needed to just fucking lay my boy. In August, Chris shifted I think I think everything Pokemon could have been saved. His attention on Yu-Gi-Oh, a similarly themed card game. I think he things would have changed if he got fucked. And attended his first Yu-Gi-Oh tournament before he fucked his mother. Like I'm not trying to laugh that he did that to her. his mom, Although but. And Fuck, night, man. She wasn't interested in a love. Like, hold on a second. I'm not. To her wishes and- like, if I was one of his female friends, man, I would have been like, look, dude. Look. I'll fuck you just to get out of your system. Like, I would have did that. I would have been a bro if I was one of his female friends. And I would have been like, yo. Dude. Speaking of which, this girl looks like she's like, dude, get the fuck away from me. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck? Look at that fucking face. Well, that's almost like the person taking the photo is like, say cheese. Look at this. Hey, smile. Put your arm around her. And it almost looks like she's having fun. By the way, I was talking too much before this. Let's see what the context of this is. Let's let's go up a little bit. Did he really make a Virgin with Rage custom Pokemon card? Dude, the signs are here. Like my boy just needed to get his dick wet. Like why didn't why did he just pay for a prostitute? Like g- goddamn. I would have been like, "Hey Chris, if I was his boy, like his friend, I'd be like, "Yo, here's a 100, bro. Put it towards a whore." 
Like, my dude needed to get fucked. He needed to get fucked, and he didn't get fucked. That's the fucking problem. Alright, here we go. The game place, where he met Megan Schroeder. Over the months of getting to know Megan, I grew fond of her. Although at that time, and up to now, she wasn't interested <laughs> in a lovely relationship. <laughs> Although at that time, and up to now, she wasn't interested in a lovely relationship. She doesn't even look interested in knowing who you are, man. Look at her fucking face. I wonder where she's up to now. They said her full name. I've bided to her wishes and requests. I am truly fond of her. Since he and Megan had Yu-Gi-Oh as a common interest. She was a Yu-Gi-Oh. So she was a Yu-Gi-Oh nerd. Like, and, and if you think of like tabletop gaming and like nerd convention and shit, she was like a fucking 10. Like as far as nerds go. Bide his obsession with the game, creating more and more custom Yu-Gi-Oh cards. With one depicting crystal. Christian he made a card of her. Oh no, that's his female twin. So this is Crystal, the female twin. He made an original character. He also designed a girlfriend's gift card on which the illustrated girlfriend looks suspiciously like the sister. On September 4th, Christian Catching fills. Love quest so far. While I was at the mall for the eighth week today, I realized something. Hold on. This motherfucker goes to the mall eight weeks in a row? Dude, I go to the mall like fucking twice a fucking year. He goes to the mall that many times a year and he still can get fucked? Well, I was at the mall for the eighth week today. I realized something. Since I have been using a sign to state my being single and lonesome towards an 18 to 22 year old boyfriend free woman, I, in the event, was trying to sell myself like a new car. Oh, later, hold on, hold on. Love quest was interrupted by That's that answered my own question, guys. I was like, why didn't he just pay for a hooker? He wanted a genuinely like ideal good partner. He wanted a boyfriend free girl that was eighteen to twenty two. Remember he said slender. Uh he wanted like a a girl next door type, so he would have been terrified of a prostitute. That that makes sense now. Cause fuck, it's not that hard to get laid. I jerk up. I told that jerk up off when I pulled some of my fun cards and told my lonesome virgin story. <laughs> Tipster, Tipster says, "Get you a nerdy girl who plays Yu-Gi-Oh." Not wrong. Calls tabletop gamers a ten on the nerd chart, and you're sitting. Paying Warhammer up? No, that's not what I said. I said in the in the grand scheme of like nerd stuff, that girl is a ten. <laughs> Xander Scullion, what's up, dude? It's been a bit. Hashtag Xander Scullion with the super chat. Thank you so much. Xander Scullion donated two dollars through super chat. Oh, Chris Chan lol. <laughs> yes, Chris Chan. What's up, Xander? So, no, what I was saying is that girl, like, if you think of, like, nerds and geeks and crap, like, for the early, what is this, like, 05, 06 that this timeline's taking place on, she's a fucking 10 to be hanging out, like, with fucking nerds. That's my point. Sorry. Intimidated him and shouted no into his face. In short, today was my Independence Day, but I am still alone. On September 11th, I like that he says jerk ops. Took a turn for the worst. I'm gonna steal that I was word. Not bothering anyone at the mall today while I was trying to sell myself. When I got arrested for trying, I fortunately did not go to jail, but I have been stripped of my right to go to the so mall. So he got banned myself. from the mall. I would be required to bring my mom or dad with me. My independence and my soul were practically murdered. Chris's run of misfortune climaxed. So that tells me later, the school board of PVCC suspended him for one year. My dad is bloodthirsty for revenge. That tells me if he got he got banned at the mall, he was a creep. Like that means people were like complaining about him. Like he was like standing there like being just a weirdo staring at people. Like he all he needed at this point was a banana Nintendo Switch and and to be sitting there just eyeing people and, and looking at girls from far away being a fucking creep. Like, it's all he needed. <laughs> like, he was that, that step away. ...as well, 
He's going to write to U.S. President George W. Bush Jr. and Laura Bush to help me get allowed back to PVCC. We all curse to death upon that XXXXX Mary Lee Walsh. He hated Mary Walsh. In conjunction with his suspension, he was required to take anger management classes. Like, I wonder how Chris Chan would act if you went up to him and, and asked him social skills about Mary Walsh, like in person, in or said you're related event, to her. He lamented over his inability to go to PVCC or the mall and confessed that he would be asking for a girlfriend this Christmas. Despite his bans from the college and the fashion square, he decided to continue with his search for a boyfriend free Is it Moggs? I have no clue. ...to the University of Virginia's campus to do so. However, this move wasn't for long, as Christian was allowed back to the fashion square in... Hey, he's day. back at the mall. Regardless, he went back to UVA for a different kind of engagement, in the form of a mandatory psychiatric evaluation. He had a psychiatric a evaluation? ...in existence, but this is the only one so far which has been made public. Mr. Chandler says that since finishing high school and starting at PVCC in the year 2000, he has had an increasing interest in a female companion. His attempts at this ultimately led to his suspension from college. His attempt took the form of a sign, which he placed next to himself while sitting in the lobby at Piedmont. The sign was a list of qualifications that a potential girlfriend would have. So he had a he psychiatric was... evaluation, and what it turned on to be is that his increased horniness it says increase in interest but basically he was so horny that it caused psychiatric problems for him and he got like him getting suspended and shit was the root of it all like he's he's gonna blame it on mary probably right here and that he's just frustrated with not being able to get laid like i power wolf just said it he don't think it would have made him normal but i think it would have definitely made him less weird if he would have fucking you're telling me, like, in the whole state of Virginia, there wasn't a girl that, like, I think his standards were too high. I think there was maybe, like, a, like a, like a decent girl, like, like, at least a five. He could have pulled a five. He wasn't that bad looking. Like, I would, I would have fucked Chris Chan if I was in high school. <laughs> if I was a girl, I would have, I would have fucked Chris Chan if I was a girl that he went to high school with. Not now, though. Chris, don't even think about Chris Chan. Chris Chan or Christine, do not even think about coming over here and trying to fuck now. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, let's continue. Very frustrated by his inability to find a girlfriend, and he suffers from noviophobia. This refers to his frustration. Noviophobia. That's that funny. Already have a boyfriend. While he does have physical attraction towards females, his primary frustration is with his lack of companionship. The report mentions his medical record. A new Chris Chan is born every day. You're not fucking he has wrong. Already undergone psychological evaluation by Robin Hawks at the Center of Learning Potential. The recommendation concerning Mr. Chandler's emotional status is that he seek psychiatric and psychological treatment. The psychologist felt that counseling and medication would possibly address his obsessive thought pattern and assist him with social skills. So he basically he just had an obsession with management. with trying to get laid. The analysis also comments on Christian's appearance and demeanor in the session. The patient is a mildly overweight white male wearing blue jeans and a shirt. He was also wearing a makeshift necklace that has a large plastic medallion in the shape of a Pokemon character's head. <laughs> they wrote that they in the evaluation? He dink decorations attached to this necklace. He had a large backpack that he carried with him and had a notebook containing a large number of drawings. His speech was somewhat nasal, with frequent awkward laughing during his sentences. His they write that fluent. much? Like, they talk about how your his speech sounds? Were appropriate to the questions posed to him. Overall, the volume of his speech was slightly elevated, although his tone was generally pleasant and almost jovial. His thought processes were linear and logical. He was somewhat concrete, especially regarding social interactions. He seemed to have a good insight into his limitations. The attending physician offers up his final verdict. Folstein's score was 30 out of 30, with his sentence being, Uncle Spunky is a really funky monkey. Yeah. Mr. Chandler is a 22-year-old man. 41-year-old developmental delays. IQ of a 10-year-old. Despite these limitations, he seems to have been quite successful in maximizing... It's sad, really. He is left, however, with a severe degree of social awkwardness and seems to have good insight into this. 
He's left feeling somewhat frustrated as he has a That music tire. just really adds to the emotion. Although his social limitations prevent him from being able to realize this in the way which he would like. The patient doesn't seem to pose a significant threat to himself or anyone else. After the evaluation, Chris carried on with life much like before with neither him. Oh shit, what the fuck? Did my shit fucking close? No! The fucking browser closed. How the fuck did that happen? It was almost over too. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. No, fuck off. What the fuck? Leave social skills counseling. Give me a second. Horseradish. There we go. I think we're good. It's just all fucking fuck now. There we go. All right. Fixed. Sorry about that. He suffers from no via medical record, emotional status, and a tanker to this neck. Generally pleasant and a verdict. Falstein's score was 30 out of 30, with his sentence being, Uncle Spunky is a really funky monkey. The patient doesn't seem to pose a threat to anyone. If only they fucking saw it back then, right? And autism. Despite these limitations, he seems to have been quite successful in maximizing his academic abilities. He is left, however, with a severe degree of social awkwardness and seems to have they literally said he was 30 out of 30 feeling so much frustrated as he has a strong desire for companionship although his social limitations prevent him from being able to realize this in the way which he would like the patient doesn't seem to pose a significant threat to himself or anyone else after the evaluation Chris carried on with life much like before I think that guy just half-assed it, any or Chris fucking ways. faked it pretty good. But Christmas was soon approaching, and maybe Santa would bring him a girlfriend like he wished, <laughs> who could right all his wrongs and change his life for the better. Jesus. I think, you know what, man, I think that psychiatric evaluation could have, if it was properly done, it could have prevented a lot of things in the future. I think honestly, it sounded like that person that did that psychiatric report kind of half assed it. And yeah, you're right. It is kind of sickening to, uh, to, uh, for him not to understand what leaving someone alone means. But when you're dealing with somebody like that, I've seen people like that. I actually had, um, at too many games one year. There was this guy that was there, and he was, I guess, special. Um, he did something to me, like uh, one year or some shit. Like something happened where he did. He was doing like really creepy shit to like some of the guests, and we had like an altercation or or something happened. Or I think maybe he said something to me on social media, and um. Like the next year, he like followed me into like literally like a one bathroom, like one of those bathrooms where it's like a one person, like you enter and there's a toilet in there and a sink and that's it. Like it's for like one person, right? He literally followed me. I didn't even see him behind me, but like I walked into like this green room area where only like it was like off limits to the public. And um, I walk into the bathroom and I turn around to like close the door and this fucking dude is like standing in there with me and he started fucking yelling at me and I'm like, what the fuck? And there was like nobody in there in that green room or in the bathroom. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to get fucking murdered by this fucking, <laughs> you know, by this fucking special needs fucking psycho stalker dude. And, um, luckily, uh, somebody actually came into the room at the time and I was like, yo, you need to get this guy out of here before I fucking Jackie Chan his ass. But it was pretty scary.
I forget the context of what happened or whatnot. I just remember like this guy didn't like he was he was like not all there and he didn't fucking like me and something happened and he followed me into like like this private room that had like a special like private bathroom. So I was like, yeah. It's like that was not creepy. This was like back like in 2015, 2016, something like that. Quite a while ago. Whew. Always bring pepper spray. Well, you can't carry pepper spray with you to the airport. So let me ask you guys, what are y'all thinking? How many of y'all have heard of Chris Chan before watching this stream? Can I get one in the chat? Or how many of y'all have, have never heard? If you, if you heard of Chris Chan, push one. If you have never heard of Chris Chan, push two. And what are y'all thinking of this documentary? I'm glad you guys are hanging out, by the way. Can we get... um? Oh, well, Tipsta. It's Tipsta with the one. Zombie. You have. You're more familiar with the antics. Word of Russia. What's up, Daddy-o? Haven't seen you in a while. What's up, Eddie? Truman. How's it going? You always thought he was a skater, dude? Chris Chan? No, isn't there like another skater dude that has like a weird name comparable to that? I don't know much about pro skating besides Tony Hawk and Bam Margera and um, what's the guy's name? Is it like Bucky, uh, not Bucky Lassick or whatever the heck, right? I only play like a few Tony Hawk games. That's the only thing I know about skating is like Tony Hawk 3 and stuff like that. Which, by the way, tipster in the chat has Tony Hawk world records. <clears throat> Appreciate you guys being here. Let's get those likes up. Can we get a like spike? Chris Chan's crazy and didn't get institutionalized. I'm honestly surprised that's not what that's not what happened when he got out of jail. Like when I first initially saw he got out of jail, I thought they were moving him like to some like psychiatric like Arkham Asylum type of fucking place. They should have just did that. Like have him under like Was he from your neck of the woods originally? No. Chris Chan is from Virginia, Ruckersville. I'm getting hungry again. Shit, I might get me a little snacky snacky. Get a little snacky snacky before we continue to part three. You guys want to see part three? Man, it's been two and a half hours. It doesn't even fucking feel like it. We can get a little snacky snacky. We can go to part three. I ate like a fat fuck today. I'm not, I'm not even joking, dudes. Like, I ate like a fat ass today. Um, I've not seen any Riverdale, actually, Daddy-O. Which is surprising because I do like Archie. What time is it? It's only 12.30 a.m. here where I'm at. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go downstairs. I'm going to refill my drink or I might get a soda. And then I'm going to start part three of the Chris Chan comprehensive ABE or 8B reaction. I need to come up with a good little thing about it. It's the first time that I'm trying to do like a stream like this in a while. I usually don't do watchies, but I got inspired by some people, including like Tipster and Review Tech and other people to do watchies. Um, I'm always afraid that I'm going to get copyright striked by the people who own the fucking content especially when larry bundy jr fucking copyright striked me for using his fucking image in a fucking thumbnail um but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go downstairs make sure if you guys haven't smashed like yet smash a like if you haven't subscribed yet smash the fucking like i'm trying to get to 100k subs this year i'll be right back do not touch that dial do not go anywhere We'll be right back, okay? I'll be right back. Give me like 2.5 minutes.
All right, we back. We back. Who's still with me? I got me some graham crackers. Oh, thanks, Tipster. Appreciate that. Okay. Yo, you ain't eating my graham cracker? Daisy, no. Come on. Okay, we're watching Chris Chan. Go down. Go down. I'm watching Chris Chan. You're going to get scared of Chris Chan, Daisy. You're not allowed to watch. Right. I'm fucking like sunk in. Cookie. Have you had like a shortbread cookie, Raz? Hello. My name is uh, Christian Chandler. Age 22 at this time. I will be 23 on February 24th, 2005. <clears throat> anyway, for uh, over a year now, I've uh, been trying to attract an 18 to 22 year old boyfriend free girl, 18 to 21 before February 24th, 2004, which is this year. Anywho, been trying for over a year to attract a girl, boyfriend free girl, and I have failed. And you know, when you got when you have so much so many failures at this time, you can't help but feel sad, you know, and depressed. And yet here it is about Christmas time. And well, all I want for Christmas is a boyfriend free girl. Chris prepared. God damn, I I I feel I feel so fucking terrible for this dude. Like at least that guy, who he was. Now not so much. But Jesus Christ, this poor dude literally sat up like an yeah, like an AA meeting, said all I've been asking for the last year is for a boyfriend free girl. Pets his little stuffed animal cat. Where the fuck that is right there. And it's like, fuck, man. I, oh, my God. I cannot feel bad for this dude. Cannot feel bad for this guy. We need... I thought I had a bottle of whiskey here, but I guess it's gone. Follow me. I know Whoa, you. thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Swivicus. Swivicus. I hope I said that right. Dude. I cannot feel sorry for this guy because he fucking <laughs> he went grimy later on. All right. For by singing two of his songs for the camera, he performs "So Need a Cute Girl." Tell me why I so need a cute girl. My. Followed by "All I Want for Christmas Is a Pretty Girlfriend." All I want for is a girlfriend. Oh, she has to be 18 to 22. <sighs> well, at this time of year, all I can say right now is that I hope Santa will comply with my request and bring me a pretty girlfriend. Okay, look. I need to know what his scale of pretty is like, right? Like, would he have settled for, like, an okay-looking girl? That's what I need to know. Like, what's a pretty girl? Right to him. Friend. And so, 
Happy Holidays from me, Christian Chandler. By the way, you can call me Chris. And Wait. Retro Joe says sad thing is 23-year-olds were throwing themselves at him. Were they or are you just being funny because he was stopping the age at 22? <laughs> he was living with his parents when this was filmed. This was like, what, 05, 06, somewhere around there? There was an autistic woman who had a thing for Chris and he said nope. Retro Joe says, "Just kidding." Okay, see, I don't. I'm still new to the uh, to the Chan lore, the Chaniverse, or Christery. I'm still new to Christery. I'm learning as we go. Hashtag cheesecake hype. Nice. In public, and thank you. Christian whipped his camera out for Christmas Day too, and documented the state of the house at that time. Twas Christmas Day. I and see pretty girls everywhere it go. For my family I get the reference, Eddie. And me and our two cats. And we wander What's up, Adele? Wondrous Christmas tree. Chris Chance tree. <laughs> the star was made so delicately. The star on top of I the love Christmas, in fact, even though it's a little bit drama. Dreams were dashed that day. And a Christmas present that was supposed to be for the Aww. girlfriend that Santa brought. But unfortunately, she didn't show. Chris Damn. Eric, do not feel sorry for Chan. Do not. Introduces his audience to his parents. And now we wander in on my family. Say hello, Father. This is just like a night Christmas movie. I cannot believe this dude was real. This is well, a real person. A VHS anyway. A smaller Christmas tree down here. And our mothers sleep here in a dark area. It almost feels like 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 you know how like Borat is a fake character. You know, you know how like this is Borat, like like Borat's a fake character. This almost feels like it's a bit, but it's not. Like we have to remember that it's not a bit. Uh, Merry Christmas to the world, Father. Oh, oh, oh. The tour puts a spotlight on the extent of the hoarding situation in the house, as Chris visibly has trouble navigating. Through High the five. Come to the entire world. Yep. After the tour, Chris documents the gift exchange, revealing the interpersonal dynamics of the family. This is when he was like 22 years old, Christian. Well, here we are around the Christmas tree. We're going to open presents. Right, right. Chris presents Bob with a card. Okay. Are supposed to read it? Yes, we are. Am I supposed to read it out loud? Yeah. Read to Mom. I want to thank you all for you know what? support. And love throughout His night night parents night. seemed like they were good folks. Did he really write a letter for his dad to read about Santa bringing him a girlfriend? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like I asked him, then I'm going to need some support finding a fourth fence free. Is he really writing a fucking letter saying he needs his dad to help him find a boyfriend free girl? It'll come, Christian. Hope you all like my presence. Today, um, the cringe is fucking Christmas real Christmas right Christmas. here. Merry Christmas. Christian, yep. Christian gives Bob the option of receiving the puppet TV show Fraggle Rock on DVD or on VHS. After Christian discreetly implies that he wants to keep the DVD for himself, Bob caves in and chooses to take the VHS. <laughs> Wait a minute. He asked his dad if he wanted Fraggle Rock on VHS or DVD. And then he hinted that he wanted the DVD, so he made his dad take the VHS. They failed their son. They refused to give him proper therapy for the autism. Failed to step in when his internet antics started to interfere. That's fair, but like back here, like right here, right now, I honestly think they weren't too bright themselves. Like this whole family might have needed help. You know what I mean? 
Like, like, because how old was his dad when he was born? His dad was like already in his fifties, right? And his mom was like forty-one. So by the time he was twenty, they were already like senior citizens. They're probably, probably even right here in this video. You know, probably right here in this video during this Christmas, they probably didn't know shit. They probably didn't even fucking know what the fuck was going on. They probably all had fucking disability, mental disabilities, honestly. Right? Or am I missing something here? Yes. Yeah. So you want the VHS? Yeah. There you go. I'm not much for the other. Easy. Why do we have one I gave him a choice. I gave him a choice, remember? You remember the original one DVD? Oh. Yeah, it's Frank Rock, Father. That's what's on there. Oh, I see. Everything that's on the DVD is on that VHS. Uh, the They're really, he's really given his dad a this fucking Fraggle Barbara Rock with a Lego set. No boring stuff. He gives her a plush doll of the Japanese character Hamtaro. Look okay, at you, Hamtaro. Hamtaro. I don't even know who Hamtaro is. It's a Hamtaro. Oh, it's the little hamsters. I remember those now. The family discussed the possibility of a surprise visit from Sarah. Oh, that's my present for Sarah. Because, uh, you know, she, she might come over. Okay. Well, she did last year, remember? Chris attempts at an embrace with his mother, but ends up hurting her instead. Here, Oops. I'm oh, sorry. Don't work my head. I'm sorry. He does it again. Two boxes together here. Yeah. I'm sorry. Chris gives Barb another present, a snow globe with him in it. Snow globe with me in it. Merry Christmas, Robert. It's also got it's also got Sanchu in it. Look, see, me on one side, Sanchu on the other. He gave him a Sanchu snow globe. Snow globe. After the gift unwrapping, I don't even have that much to his room home videos video from when I was videos. young. That's crazy how much home video well, footage there is of him. Since our family Christmas of 2004. I think it's so this was 2004. It does not compare to having a boyfriend for a girl that I could make it to a girlfriend. Yeah, uh, but unfortunately, I was hoping for her to come, but she didn't. My, my uh, lifelong friend, Sarah Hammer. You know, she Sarah didn't been come. paired up with that jerk, Wes Isley. I could have her, but seriously, no. I wish she was here so that I could talk to her. So it seems like Sarah's the girl that he really liked his his childhood friend Sarah who he made a character of a Sonic character and he also made a black Sonic Chew character that was her boyfriend so I'm honestly surprised he didn't try to kill her boyfriend if I'm gonna be completely fucking honest seems like something that somebody unstable would have did and so she can help me in my Wants to get a boyfriend free, 18, 22 year old girl. 18, 23 years of February 24th. He's raising up the years again, 23. Well, anyway, uh, that pretty much uh, sums up my uh, Christmas season for this year. So, uh, as he's saying, showbiz. Goodbye, folks. As he entered 2005, Christian continued his tried and true tradition of pacing around the mall, hoping to attract. Pacing around the mall. That's why he got banned. He was pacing around the fucking mall. Anna McLaren, an employee of Pack and Son at Charlottesville Fashion Square, who described her encounter with him in a blog post titled "The Tale of the Crazy Pacer." Holy shit! I was not aware of this. So there was actually a girl that worked in the mall that made a blog about him. Holy crap, this should be good. There was a guy who paced in front of Abercrombie and Fitch. He'd come and do it for hours on end, <laughs> just God. walking back and forth. He was an okay looking guy, not evil looking like creepy molest. Hey, she called him an okay looking guy. He probably could have gotten her. Dude. So he would pace for his allotted time, then leave. 
Sometimes, as he paced, he would sing or shout. Nobody really could ever tell what he was saying. Oh yeah, and he always wore <laughs> oh, the same shirt. A nice little long-sleeved red and blue number she, that she, had a gold crest. She called his shirt side. nice little long-sleeved red and blue. White and white collar and cuffs. Then, one day, he decided to start pacing on the pack sun side. So he started pacing in front of our store. We were doing floor set, and Lin Lin noticed that crazy pacer kept looking into Pak Sun as he paced. And this day, he was acting particularly crazy. He'd pace and pace, oh my then God. stop and shout something at the wall, then keep pacing. <laughs> and he also did some singing, even getting into the vibrato falsetto junks. It was hilarious. So anyways, someone, I can't remember who, suggested that the next time he looked in, we wave at him. Oh man. So they waved, and... They fucked up by engaging with him. You do not ever engage. It's like Chris Chan's like a T Rex. You do not look at him. You do not move. His move. His 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 actions are based on sight. Do not wave to the Chan. Christian waved back. After some waving back and forth, Christian took the initiative and entered the store. He came right up to the counter that I was standing behind, and he looks right at me, all fidgety and twitchy, and he goes. You look to be about 19 years old, right? He then proceeded to introduce himself. My name is Christian, he said, but you can call me Chris. Do I'm not Christian poke w. the Christian. Chandler. Oh, I said. Hi, Chris. So, he continued, do angels have names? I found out later that he meant to say do angels <laughs> like you have names. Oh, man, he tried to do a pickup line on her. and Poor guy. Poor guy was so nervous, he didn't get it right. Anna introduces herself, then Chris talks about eyes. My eyes are two different colors. One of them is green, and the other is blue. <laughs> That's because I had pink eye a while back, and one of them stayed that way. What the fuck? He's talking to these girls, he says, my eyes are two different colors, one of them is green and the other is blue. That's because I had pink eye a while back, and one of them stayed that way. Imagine telling a girl my eyes this color because I had pink eye before and it stayed this way. What the fuck? That's disgusting. What color are your eyes? I was pretty grossed out by the pink eye story, but I told him anyway. Sometimes blue, sometimes green, and usually gray. <laughs> Say it, Truman. Neat. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? Yeah, I said. He attempts to ask was that a David Bowie reference? I don't think it was. He Pink eye? He settles on the internet as a form for future communication between them. Christian came back and handed me a card with a crudely drawn Sonic the Hedgehog and some other yellow Sonic looking creature on it, along with Christian's name, email address, and website. It was a homemade business card. That's my email address, and you can just email me sometime, okay? Okay, I said, not intending to email him at all. Little did either of them know, but this was the start of a friendship. But for the time being, Chris's contact with Anna was sparse. Wow. They fucked up. I mean, good on them being nice to him and shit, but... <sighs> he knows where they work. <laughs> In February, Cartoon Network's Adult Swim Block... Hey, I remember Harvey Birdman. ...asked viewers to make their own commercial advertising the release of the cartoon series Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, Volume 1 DVD set. Christian sent in his own unique take in which he mentions his ongoing feud with Mary Lee Walsh. Hello! I hired Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law, to help... This guy still hates Mary. ...in my case against Mary Lee Walsh, who years ago shared my heart. And he has won the case for me, and knew he has won for me. A Harvey Birdman 2 this DVD box set, which comes out April 12, 2005. He finishes with a brief promotion of his custom cards depicting himself and Sonichu. This is a Christian Chandler Sonichu production. Regrettably, the winning entry did not feature Chris. Could you imagine if Adult Swim would have, like, picked Chris or been like, you know what? We could do something with this guy. You know damn well if they would have had him send something in today, they would have made him, like, a guest on like on the Tim and what is it? Um, the Eric Andre show or what the fuck is it? Or, or the, the fucking Tim and uh, what the fuck is it off the top of my head? They c totally could fucking give Chris Chan a fucking well now. No, but 2005, 2004 Chris Chan would have been a fucking star on Adult Swim.
In response, he vented his frustration at losing on the Adult Swim message board. <laughs> My entry was very dramatic and a lot better than that piece of poo or any of the others that made. Wow, he went off on well. the fucking. I'm very upset form? about that. My quick's Harpy Bird demand spot was the best, and I feel sorry for yeah, you, Tim and Adult Eric. Swim, for not noticing that. You all should take another good look at it and seriously reconsider. In March, Christian published Sonichu, Sonichu. Issue, his first full-length comic. The issue is further divided into episodes, much like a television show, with a different story in each I one. used to draw comics it's too, but I didn't hang on to any of them. Five miles I wish I did. Of Station Square, in which a wild Pikachu observes fighting in the distance between Supersonic and the perfect Chaos Monster. Pikachu gets caught in the scuffle and collides with Sonic. The impact releasing a rainbow which lands on a girl Raichu 15 miles away, who then transforms into a hedgehog-like creature and calls herself Rose Chu. Meanwhile, the Pikachu somehow inherited Supersonic's powers and changed form and joins Sonic in the battle, defeating the perfect chaos monster. He christens himself Sonichu. Christian himself interjects here and there. He draws himself having one blue and one green eye as he had told Anna. Because of the pink eye. Fact, different colors, but the difference is nowhere near as profound as in his illustrations. He then proceeds to introduce Quickville and reveals that he is also the mayor of said town. He then goes on to introduce all the main characters of the story, including Mary Lee Walsh. Wow, he, he, he made a fucking last, cartoon character of the girl? Page to talk about Christian Weston Chandler. The next episode concerns Sonichu and Rose Chu meeting and quickly falling in love sharing a kiss underneath a spray of fireworks. In episode 3, Sonichu confesses that he has a dislike for pickles, as does Christian in real life. This is followed by the introduction of the evil foe, Natesirk, <laughs> whose name is simply Christian, backwards. That's fucking After weird. the battle is won, Mayor Chandler drives off in his car, carrying the Virginia vanity plate, Sonichu identical to the one on his real life car wow it should be noted that sonichu refers to chris as his father even though his creation has nothing to do with christian the comic ends with a sub episode starring chris in a story based up, prince on david with the mall police however in this version he clutches his medallion says electric hedgehog power and transforms into chris chan sonichu <laughs> who largely looks like a blue colored sonichu making him look like the original sonic the hedgehog he drew himself to be a lot thinner you're not wrong on that metal armor needless to say chris defeats him by cursing him into experiencing horrendous bad luck by using his cursed yehameha attack the cursed yehameha meha it's the end of march hannah who worked at starbucks in the fashion square approached christian during his near daily pacing and asked him out on a date Whoa! She left. My boy got asked on a date by a girl that worked at Starbucks. How do we think this turns out, guys? Push one in the chat if you think it's gonna go good. Push two if you think Chris Chan is gonna fuck it up. I became very excited. I have hiccups oh all God, fucking all night. Over. After calling mom and eating me nuggets. I lifted the chair with such cheer and grace and spun around with Hold on, first of all. Answer. Then I put it back where it was. I, I did not know Chris Chan nuggets. was a man of fucking... Whoa, shit. That actually made me jump. <laughs> oh, damn. Tipster tipped $5. Thanks. The pink eye story is almost as bad as EDP 445 sending a girl a picture of his turd. <laughs> oh, dude. Wow. The only... Hold on real quick. Thank you. First of all, can I get a hashtag tipster in the chat? You fucking legend. We're going to touch tips one day. The only reason... And I'm not trying to validate sending a turd to a female. And also, I forgot about that. But that's fucked up. Because I remember seeing a... Somebody sent me a photo of the fucking... Oh, God. I feel sick to my stomach now thinking about EDP... 445's fucking turds. The only way I would ever send a female a video or a photo of my turd is if that motherfucking turd was like this big. Like if it was like a fucking like the the tenth wonder of the world. Like I would send that to everybody. Like I would like if I fucking if it was like this big of a fucking turd in the bowl, I would send that to like my parents. I'd send it to like 
whatever girl I was fucking at the time. I'd send it to, like, all my homies. I'd post it on Twitter. Like, if it was, like, a fucking turd, like, solid fucking rock, like, this fucking huge, that's the only way I would do it. <laughs> if it was, like, a fucking, like, like a fucking, like, like a fucking, like, holy fucking shit. Like a fucking nice, like, like a holy shit. I have no clue about that, zombie. That's crazy. Or if that girl's your doctor. I couldn't date somebody that's my doctor. That would be kind of weird. <laughs> like, I can't even date a girl that's like a dent. Well, no, I could date a girl that's a dentist, but not my dentist. You know, like, I don't want a girl that, I don't know, it's weird. Okay, let's go on. She could be a doctor or a dentist, just don't be my dentist or my doctor. All right, so let's see. Anyways, what I was saying right now real quick is I did not know Chris Chan is a man of culture. He's eating nuggets. I got to give him props on that. I'm all about the fucking nuggy life. All right, let's go. I lifted the chair with such cheer and grace and spun around with it like a dancer. Then I put it back where it was. I felt that my love quest had finally come to an end. And I so elated that my shattered heart had a full, fast recovery. I went to Starbucks. Nuggy Nation. About basic things. I showed Basement her man, Google is your friend, man. You could have Googled a long time ago. I gave her my email and both my phone numbers on a Sonichu site card. And she gave me her email address. I was very attentive as I took notes about her and maintained eye contact. As I left her, I gave her a double take flirt. That was the rise, now here comes the fall. As I was sitting at my spot, thinking about future steps for later dates, Anna and Dana told me they went to talk to Hannah. She told them that she was setting me up in a prank. I could not believe it, so I found and asked Hannah. Sadly, it was true. Wait, so she was just lying to him that then she wanted to go on a shock. date? My heart shattered again by 85% and I let out a big no. His outburst of negation resulted in Chris getting banned from the mall again. He devoted the second sub episode to this misadventure. Wait, so the girl was fucking with him when she asked? Like it was like as a prank? That's fucked up. Not long after, he completed his second Sonichu comic, Sonichu Issue 1. Pokemon's Giovanni teams up with Sonic villain. Dr. Hey, that's Robotnik a good premise. Team Sonic Rocket and Robotnik to defeat the real thing. Unfortunately, a blunder causes Sonichu's DNA sample to get corrupted with Cherry Cola, producing an imperfect replica of our hero called Cherry Cola Black with his Sonichu, blood, also known as Blachu. Blachu captures Rosechu, so Sonichu and Sonic team up to rescue her. After combating Blachu and the new Metal Sonichu. They eventually save Rose too. I, you gotta give him credit. These are like became more really creative with some conversations stories, so at least. That Chris That's one compliment I could give Chris Chan. The following month, Chris's review for Sprung, a dating simulation game for Nintendo DS, was published in Nintendo Power. I originally bought the game because I needed Nintendo some Power. On did this motherfucker really get fucking published in Nintendo Power like twice? You know how many letters I sent to Nintendo Power back in the day? And I never got fucking featured? I, I wrote to GamePro, EGM, Nintendo Power, Tips and Tricks. This motherfucker gets in twice. This weird motherfucker that wants a boyfriend-free girlfriend that fucking ends up sleeping with his fucking mom. He gets featured twice. I'm fucking done. What to say to or do for a girl. To make a long story short, I developed a fear that all the pretty girls are already paired up with a boyfriend. I've dubbed the social phobia noyophobia after the Spanish word for boyfriend. Anyway, before sprung, I was afraid to approach most women. FYI, I am 22 years old. I tried to sign <laughs> okay. a fact, a boyfriend free After that, after reading that, they had to have been knowing that it was... Like, they had to have been fucking pranking him by publishing his shit. They were like, they they had, there's no way in fuck that Nintendo wasn't like, this guy's sad and funny and laughing at him. There's no way. Girl, mostly with signs, for over one year and four months. Then sprung Top G's do me. not give a shit what the relationship status is, to be fair. If I had the fucking applause fucking button like fucking Tipster and Rich have, I would hit it right now. I don't. Give me a second. 
I need a soundboard. I need a soundboard like like fucking tipster and review tech have. Here we go. Hold on. Top G's don't care the relationship status. There we go. All right. <laughs> With general things to say and do, so I felt more confident. When I tried my newfound expressions from the dating simulator, I forgot my fear of the infinitely high boyfriend factor, and I met a couple of lady friends with whom I feel more comfortable. So thank you, Nintendo and Ubisoft, for the dating advice that this frustrated virgin needed. Chris Holy shit! Did they really publish? They okay? Nintendo had to have been laughing at at Chris Chan to say for the dating advice this frustrated virgin needed. They had to have known. They've had to have been like, okay, we're 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 gonna fucking <laughs> whoa shit. That laugh scares me every time. Thank you, Kyle Ragan. Hashtag Kyle Ragan. Kyle Ragan tipped three dollars. Thanks. Every time I feel like my life is out of control, I get reminded that Chris Chan exists, and it could always be way worse. <laughs> and you know what's sad? Is first of all, you're not wrong on that, but you know what's sad is there's people out there that are worse than Chris Chan, but they're just not. Their life is not documented on the internet as bad as Chris Chan's is. But you're absolutely right. So I'm gonna use the soundboard. <laughs> Can I get a hashtag Kyle in the chat, please? Thank you so much for uh for that kind. Don't know. Hashtag Kyle, please. But that 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 Ted DiBiase laugh gets me fucking jump scared each time. <laughs> or as Cartman would say, <clears throat> can't get hashtag care. When you feel bad about yourself, you say at least you're not Chris Chan. You're not wrong. It's almost like hard to believe that this guy's a real person or her, since she's he's a she now. It's tough for me to say because in past tense he was a he still. She was a he back then. So until they change officially, I'm gonna say he. He sits in his chair and draws his Sonichu comics. Harmless, I ask me. Yet I feel like he knows he's different. He knows that the world rushing in front of him is not his own, surrounded by the brightest students in America, whatever that means. He sits in his chair and draws. 23 years old. I'm not sure he even graduated high school. In front of him, text of Play-Doh, Falk. 67 God, lights, can we get 70? Squirrel. Does he have the capacity to understand these works? Whether he can or not, I'm not sure. But there is something in his eyes that realizes that there is a. Can we get seventy likes? Let's get that like spike. That he is unable to partake in, as he slumps lower and lower in his chair. With each student he eyes reading a book, he falls into himself, into the markers and colors on the page in front of him. He seems intelligent enough to understand that he does not understand, and that is the hardest part of all. Damn. In that was fucking May, deep. Chris released Sonichu issue two. Sixty nine likes. Turning point in the comic as the story begins to focus on Christian. Sixty nine guys. Episode seven concerns the Antuant prophecy. When Sonic explains the mysterious prophecy to Christian, Chris reaffirms that he is the creator and father of Sonichu. They enter the Destiny Cave and unknowingly release the Destiny an Cave evil power. Chris also meets an ancient leader of the Cherokee clan who reveals that Chris is his reincarnation. He is told that he has to unleash ancient powers to defeat the evil by using his I feel like I ate something bad because I have the bubble guts now. Those graham crackers actually helped me, but... And Wes Eisley getting possessed by mysterious forces. Yeah, Craig. Episode 7 and 8. It's Christine now. an advertisement for Axe Body Spray in which... Ignorant of the societal norms of hygiene, unknowingly confesses that he believes that bathing makes people smell exceptionally nice to the point that people would compliment you and that using Axe body spray is just as effective as bathing. Episode 8 continues with Wes meeting his That's past hilarious. self, who is a member of the Wasabi clan, and turns into Wesley Sonichu and vows to kill Chris. Sarah also sees a vision and meets the queen of the Cherokee clan and transforms into Sarama Rosechu. Meanwhile, Chris Chan Sonichu accidentally transforms back into his human self, 
leaving him vulnerable to attack from Wesley Sonichu, who turns himself into a ball and goes for a flying attack, prompting this exchange from the protagonists. What the? Sonichu, run! You don't have to tell me twice, but during the Stone Age... Chris figures out that his attacker is Wes Isley and confesses how jealous he is of him for being with Sarah. Imagination he gone wild. He definitely had an imagination. Wesley reveals that he only wants to steal the Cherokeean crown. Chris changes into Chris Chan and fights Wesley Sonichu, who eventually knocks Chris out and steals the crown, which inexplicably just came into being. Before Wesley can finish him off, Sarama intervenes and fires a lightning bolt arrow at Wesley, pinning him to an unsacred tree. In the final episode, Sarah breaks up with Wes, who cries out no while shrugging. They learned that Quickville, which is a vibrant community with happy people. <laughs> so he had the, 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 the fictional girlfriend break up with the boyfriend. Cool chicks, business, and a frustrated male is under attack from a giant... Chris Chan was the original incel. ...the control of Mary Lee Walsh and the yeah. mysterious talking orb. So Chris Chan, Sarah Ma, and Wesley fly over there to fight them. The orb reveals itself as the ancient evil and announces that he is Count Graduan, who is a personification symbolizing the Definitely has an imagination, guys. High school. The three heroes beat them off for a little while, but Walsh and Graduan escape, vowing to fight another day. In the epilogue, Christian and Sarah chat on the couch, and unfortunately for Chris, she reveals that she has found herself another boyfriend named Oh my Uri. god. And thanks, Chris, for being a great friend. <laughs> he he friend-zoned himself in his own co uh, comic? My God. That's a little bit more humbling, though. An entire page to Sarah Hammer, his lifelong friend, and offers some highlights of their time together. Currently, I don't get to see he as much as I did because she found herself a boyfriend while I was in Richmond. But I often wonder he cucked she himself. Is, and if she is happy with him. I share my troubles with her in my illustrations, letters, and over the phone. I always appreciate the little moments I have with her. The final page is a call to action for all Sonichu fans, in which Chris expresses his wish to have Sonichu produced into a bona fide franchise by Nintendo America. The comic hey, he had goals. Sub Episode 3, which is a dramatic reimagining of Chris's conflict with Mary Lee Walsh. He always brings back to her. That woman ruined his life. He feels like if she never took down his little poster asking for girls to meet him, like that Mary Lee Walsh is like his nemesis. Is she alive? Did she die? That's his nemesis. Like legit. Like I'm surprised he didn't try to like curse her in real life or like stalk Mary Lee Walsh and like do voodoo on him or fucking kill her or something for real the private villa of corrupted citizens the base of operations for the villains in the sonichu universe the name of which is derived from the acronym of piedmont virginia community college with sonichu issue 2 christian comes closer to blurring the line between real life and this comic book world creating his own reality yeah in sonichu's news dash issue 9 Chris announced that he will attend the Anime Mid-Atlantic Convention in Richmond, Virginia on all three days. Since he has put himself into Sonichu's world, he will cosplay as himself. Talk about self-respect, huh? Also, he will be watching some of the good anime, getting some souvenirs, participating in some of the events, and just- I wanna cosplay as Chris Chan. <laughs> also, he will have some printed copies of Sonichu Premiere Issue Zero on- Could you imagine actually having, having a physical copy of- you will have to find him of a Sanchu comic. He stayed two nights alone in a hotel room, and during the convention, he handed out copies of Sanchu issue zero to unsuspecting attendees. I wonder if anybody actually on has one seconds, still, Christian like has a physical of copy of that. Days, I had my setup at the McDonald's at Walmart, and apparently complaints were made. The two manager jerks, or manager jerks, a Sanor comic, and a black fat jerk. He looked a lot like the leader of the jerk cops at the mall, whom I refer to now as the jerk chief, approached me and took me for a fall with my trying you wanna to- You want to cosplay as Afro Man? The guy that sings Cause I Got High? I forgot about that song. Cause I got high. Cause I got high. Cause I got high. So he... You're sure the DA has a copy? That's hilarious. I wonder if he drew any comics while he was in prison. He had all the... I mean, jail. 
Not prison. I got yelled at for saying prison. Girl, like I have been doing for the past over one year and ten months, we argued and disputed until the two of them left to call the police. While they were gone, I had taken off the sign from my Nintendo DS and hidden it on the back cover of my diary. When the jerk cops came, the they jerk were all cops. Like, what seems to be the problem? And the married Sanor comic was like, "Where's the sign?" And I was, <laughs> "What sign?" And that fucking laugh. <laughs> I got kicked out from the Thank you, Xander. Thanks. It's 2 o'clock, I'm here, I'm hopping out, but I can't wait to see more reacts to this. Hashtag Xander. I'll give PLZ goodnight, Eric. See ya, folks. Thank you so much, Xander. I appreciate that. Can I get a hashtag Xander in the chat, please? Thank you so much. That fucking laugh gets me every time when Ted DiBiase laughs. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. And the B manager was getting in my face. I feel that yeah, we're really probably, you know what? And he was like, I'm going to I'm going to make this a a weekly or whatever every couple days till we finish this whole comprehensive history of Chris Chan. I'm going to do it. Don't set up your stuff. Don't push me. I was not going to use the Nintendo DS sign today anyway, but he did not want my pixel block sculptures at all. I stood up against that manager. I continued to build and I dictated my situation into his face with a song and dance. He went up to the Walmart manager, and he was like, Hey, let's talk. But I sat silent for a minute. Hashtag Chan him, Week. I do not speak to any man other than myself, because they all have taken all the pretty girls, leaving me with none. Oh, verbal Jesus. combat had started, and during the fight, I ran off, still giving verbal punishment, as well as the finger, and many curse ye ha me ha's. Curse ye ma ye me ha's. With my car, and I gave him another finger. Then I dashed off. Now, I feel sad because I have nowhere else to go to attract a boyfriend-free girl. And I feel very furious <sighs> with those managers and all men no nuts. other than myself and my father. Chris began believing that there was a conspiracy involving all the men in his town. They all are against me in finding a girlfriend of my own. But I will not give up on my long and tedious love quest. I'll find a new attraction spot. Somewhere in Charlottesville, Virginia. So he's moving there towns. There has to be at least one 18 to 23 year old boyfriend free <laughs> carrying smoke. Look, dude, I get it. Look, look. 18 to 23, that's fine. The age, the age range. Boyfriend free, I could, I could, I can accept that you want to grow that single. Caring. Okay. Smoke free, non-alcoholic. Come on, man. Like, I get it. <laughs> White girl? You wouldn't settle for, like, an Asian, African-American, Hispanic? Filipino? Come on, dude. Like, I get all that, but the color? Like, you're reaching a little too much there. If you were to set your standards a little bit lower... I prefer Latina too. They cook. Their mothers teach them to fucking serve the husband. <laughs> you get the right Hispanic girl, you're kind of dating their mom too. Because they fucking feed you and take care of you and call you mijo. And <laughs> fucking, they make your fucking girl fucking feed and take care of you. Free, non-alcoholic, white girl out there somewhere. Chris dramatized this entire ordeal in sub-episodes 4 and 5. But his adaptation also featured the manifestation of his dream sibling, Crystal, his twin sister. So is Crystal his like inner Christine, like because he he since has become trans. Trans was that maybe like early signs of him feeling like he's a woman in the inside? A mere month later, you're guessing a lot of people gave him the "I have a boyfriend" excuse, which is why. Okay, that's fair. You forgot about trouble. Crystal? So like you think maybe time, Crystal was like early hints of him wanting to become Christine? Free girl for hours, taking gross advantage of the free refills at his disposal. I was at the new Target store, just hanging around, not bothering anyone. And from out of the blue, these two managers asked me to leave because they said I was loitering. I was not. I was there hoping to find an 18 to 23 year old. You are loitering, bro. Like I usually do. 
Then, from out of the blue, after I told them off, they came back with two jerk cops. I was slightly intimidated, but mostly annoyed and ready to strike back. This on dude's them. just getting they fucking kicked out everywhere. Return. I did not want to leave. I would have left peacefully. In fact, I was ready to go. But I had a prepared speech to say to them stupid jerk cops. And, during the middle of my speech, they chased me, pulled my pants, and pinned me to the Hold on, during the middle of his speech, they chased him, pulled his pants, and pinned him to the floor. Five jerk ops dog pile. Floor. I like Five how he jerk says jerk ops. Piled on me as I struggled to get free. A thousand pounds of sausages on my 180 pound body. Were a thousand pounds a of sausages? Flow. They handcuffed my wrists and legs, and they hogtied me. Not only did I feel humiliated from being the victim, but I was angry at them, not only for handcuffing me, but once again thwarting my efforts in trying to find a boyfriend. Okay, girl. so is he, are these stories he's making up or is he making comics about his real life things that happened to him? I'm, I'm starting to like get confused on, on what's really happening to him and what he's making up. Like, is he, is he writing comics that are fictional stories or is he making comics about shit that's happened to him? Because I'm starting to, like, the lines are starting to get blurred to me. Like, is he telling fiction or not? That's where I'm getting fucking confused at. They drove me to the county jail. But fortunately, they did not keep me there. I was released to my family. Chris was charged with trespassing. And oh, it really happened. Okay, so there's charges. So he, he got kicked out of a fucking target and they fucking... Okay, so he did it, but he made a comic about it too. What the fuck? Conduct. It was terrible, but my mother and I are going to get back at them in court. In fact, I learned that the jerk cop who arrested me was called Baggett. That was the only thing about the situation that was hilarious. Replace the B with an F and you can see how funny <laughs> it was. However... After attending two court hearings, the charges were dropped. This event was recreated in Sonic 2 sub-episodes okay. 7 and 8. So he Chris's recreated it in a comic. He endured much greater torment and came out victorious in the end. Less than a week later, Chris had another run-in with the law. This he kind of reminds me of Blue's Clues a little bit with that fucking shirt. Like, is he going to go host Blue's Clues or what? Time, a minor fender bender when he rear-ended the car in front of him. He was fined thirty dollars and also paid fifty-six dollars in That's court it? costs. In August, Christian returned to PBCC after the end of his one-year suspension. It was around this time that Anna announced that she was moving to Utah. Her announcement also somewhat coincided with her twentieth birthday. So Christian and her friends. Or he was actually invited out to a birthday party. Good on my boy! Look at him. Organized a birthday slash farewell party for her with Chris claiming that he picked out and bought the cake himself. Throughout August and September, Chris engaged in back and forth conversations by Holy MySpace shit. with two female <laughs> students, Jelena and Lindsay. But despite all his efforts to meet with them, it ultimately came to nothing. That's his ideal September, shirt. <laughs> Chris finished Sonichu issue four, which was merely a compilation of sub episodes one through eight. He claimed that his mother didn't want him making any more stories concerning his own life. So he obeyed and stopped making sub episodes. No more sub episodes. A user on a Sega forum began a discussion thread about Sonichu, in which members discussed the comic and Christian's personal antics. This was the earliest documented online discussion concerning Christian, but the original Sega forum hosting site has since been shut down and there is no known archive of the discussion. Damn, scene. that would have been hilarious to look in at November, that. Shoujo Beat. A manga anthology magazine published Chris's letter, which vaguely concerned the manga. Abs this motherfucker got published again in a different magazine. Absolute boyfriend. Riko Izawa in Absolute Boyfriend sort of has the same problem I do. She can't get a guy, and I can't get a girl. Here's my sitch. All the pretty girls are already paired up with some jerk, leaving me with none to choose from. Also, nobody can tell off the bat a paired up from a boyfriend free girl. At first, it's equally hard for Rico to find a girlfriend free boy, but then she's granted this wish where she gets a girlfriend free boy, although he is a robot, delivered to her doorstep. Lucky girl, I'm 23 years old. 
this is they had to have been reading this last sentence and been like, look, we're we're gonna embarrass this guy. He says, I'm twenty three years old. One would think I'd gotten a girlfriend by now. One would think I'd have gotten a girlfriend by now, but no, I haven't. I'm stuck in the situation where if my parents <laughs> should pass away, I will be a very lonely virgin. What does his parents passing away have to do with him getting fucked or not? That's what I don't get. <laughs> oh my god. Some months later, a fellow reader sent in a reply to Chris. Oh my god. Why is he only looking for Here we go. Girls? There are plenty of girls who are not supermodel gorgeous whom he could date. It's not the outside of the package that counts, but the inside. <laughs> a girl can be pretty on the outside, but might be Somebody has the centered. See, they knew what problems. they were doing. Whereas another girl could be plain or even ugly on the outside. But quite a beautiful, kind, intelligent person on the inside. If more guys would think about what qualities they look for in a girl and make sure those qualities don't just focus on her outer. So, see, this this magazine knew what they were doing when they published this thing because they wanted people to write back. And also, you two guys that just commented, um, Cragen and Prince David just fucking hit the nail on the head. This oh, fucking aged. Old. One would fucking think poorly. I have a girlfriend by now, but no, I haven't. I'm stuck in the situation where if my parents should pass away, I will be. He's definitely not a lonely virgin anymore. Um, he fucking handled that, and the fucking most disgusting, pathetic, stomach, fucking nauseating way ever. That fucking. Oh my god. <laughs> That aged badly because his um he took advantage of his mother. All right, let's continue on. Virgin. Jesus Christ! Some months later, a fellow reader sent in a reply to Chris. Why is he only looking for pretty girls? There are plenty of girls who are not supermodel gorgeous whom he could date. It's not the outside of the package that counts, but the inside. A girl yeah, he needed to lower his standards a little bit. Might be mean or self-centered or have other problems. Whereas another girl could be plain or even ugly on the outside, but quite a beautiful, kind, intelligent person on the inside. If more guys would think about what qualities they look for in a girl and make sure those qualities don't just focus on her outer appearance, they might just find a girl to go out with. Otherwise, many girls will think, why bother? He'll just leave me for the next pretty girl he sees. Megan agreed with her sentiment. Chris's advances towards Megan intensified. As a Megan, she's still involved. I didn't know Megan was still involved. This is the girl, the Yu-Gi-Oh girl. Did not know Megan was still a thing. Documented in their emails. She declined giving out her phone number and later in the same email also declined his invitation to go out to a restaurant. In an email from December, she stated that she did not appreciate Christian trying to kiss her and admitted that she is not interested in a relationship, but insisted they can remain as friends. Damn. She also confessed to accidentally discovering that he bought Megan a Nintendo DS, even though she had recently just gotten one herself. Through Megan, Chris was introduced to My Little Pony and Sailor Moon, with Megan providing him with some of her own fan art. He also began hey, she drew pretty good. My Little Pony figures including one that he made using his own hair. <laughs> what the hold on, hold on. What the fuck? Did he really make a fucking custom male. My Little Pony with his own hair? I got to I got to rewind that. Hold on. He also began making his own custom My Little Pony figures, including one that he made using his own hair. What the fuck? Oh my god, I cannot believe he made a, cust a custom My Little Pony using his own hair. That is creepy as fuck. Jesus Christ. As an adult male fanatic of My Little Pony, he preceded the so-called brony culture, which would only begin to blossom around five years later. I remember the brony era. Him to bid on a collection of World War II photos on eBay, of which Chris was the winning bidder. Oh, dude, that'd be great being a fucking part of the jury for this case. Spending habits intensified. I need to move to Virginia. <laughs> My Little Pony and Sailor Moon figures, pornography, and sex toys, among other things. What the fuck? In February of 2006, Christian finished drawing Sonichu Issue 3, which took seven months to complete. 
The comic begins with the origin stories of each member of the chaotic combo, whose eggs were created in and ejected from the rainbow as seen in episode 1. The green egg lands in the jungle. The electric hedgehog Pokemon that came out of it grows up to become Wild Sonichu. The blue egg lands in the ocean and is rescued by the Pokemon Swampert. He definitely has a fucking the beach, just imagination. See you later, Stefano. Bubbles Rose Chew. The white egg lands in front of a church, and out of it hatches Angelica Rose Chew, who is raised by nuns. Mystifyingly, oh, after she evolves I moved over the wrong tab. Overnight, Christian is outside her window. I was checking my fucking a uh, and a pair of shoes analytics. As a gift. The red egg crashes into Nabe's dojo shin and hatches. For some reason, Nabe is compelled to rip off the Sonny's tail, causing him to instantly evolve into Punchy Sonichu. The purple egg hatches in a cave, and the purple Sonny starts to telepathically communicate with the Pokemon Mewtwo, who decides to mentor Fucking it. weird. For months, this mysterious mentor taught the Sonny how to hone his pores, lift objects mentally and physically, and what the outside world was like. Until one day, during meditation, the Sonny suddenly evolves into Magichan Sonichu. Magichan, dude, he has a. F he farted. With a final bulletin, which would have been more suitable for a televisual feast rather than a comic book. Stay tuned for when these hedgehogs meet. In the next episode, Blachu steals a Master Sunstone and, through a comedy of errors, is met with four of the chaotic combo. Eventually, the five-member troops. It's like the Power Rangers. Sonichu, and they take down Blachu leaving him in a bloody mess, accompanied by a tweet tweet sound effect, commonplace in cartoons. The comic closes with a fake ad for a call service that would send one of the two single men in the world a beautiful girlfriend or a monkey. In May 2006, fucking weird. Christian attained a CAD degree after five years of study, even though it should have only taken two. For the graduation ceremony, hey, at least he, he graduated, to wear right? The robe from his high school graduation <laughs> instead. Now that Christian received this qualification, this made him more likely to get a job and advance his life towards building up a career, doing what he loved, and possibly even realizing his wish for the Sonichu franchise to become a dignified reality, making his dream come true. Oh man, what a fucking roller coaster ride. What a ride. Another episode? Um, no, not tonight. Maybe tomorrow, if not later this week. So make sure you guys do subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications on. And um, yeah, we're going to call it a night tonight. But I do appreciate everybody hanging out. To everybody that contributed a donation or a super chat, thank you so much. If you're not a channel member, consider becoming one because uh, we're going to have a lot of extra fun stuff for channel members. This was actually pretty cool. It's a lot of stuff to pack in. Didn't even feel like I did three and a half hours, but I do appreciate y'all. Make sure you subscribe and um, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. You have a good night. You guys be safe and take care. I appreciate y'all.